microphone cue. There we are. Hello and welcome to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, a D&D 5th Ed homebrew campaign in which I have created an entire world, which I've now lost track of because there's so many details. I have literally over 150 pages just of NPCs and crap that I've written. Holy moly. But it's also kind of interesting and always an interesting place to go back to as we are for this second campaign, The Great Confusion. I'm Mark the Encaffeted One, host, GM, and general dog's body. But I have with me my players, starting on my left with Pat. Hi, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, local warlock. Hi, my name is Marie, and I'm playing uh, Annie, who is uh, definitely, definitely not royalty. <laughs> I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric, who now has a stronger connection with Ignis, and could maybe summon a favor. Who knows? He burns a little brighter these days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. After the traumatic, confusing and bizarre events in an otherworldly version of the mansion, you return back to the normal town of Aethwater, where everything is normal and nothing ever goes wrong. While having a conversation about how everything had already gone wrong, uh, Melora happened to look out the window and noticed, hey, is that supposed to be there? A giant glowing portal out of which large demons were lumbering. Uh, sure enough, uh, determining that it wasn't supposed to be there, you went out to uh, to greet the new arrivals with as much weapons and, and manpower as you could manage and managed to stop them in their tracks. There were several flying creatures as well as a f uh, several large lumbering kind of orange ape-like creatures. They're a bit more than apes and a bit less than demons, but somewhere in between. Uh, you managed to stop them and halt their progress, and even managed to intercept several of the flying ones as they seemed to be bent on going and getting things, strange sets of things. However, in the process of all of that, two of your allies were dragged through the portal, uh, one being uh, the uh, Earth Elemental, known fondly as Graveler, who had been eviscerating creatures at the door until one of them decided it was easier just to hug rather than fight. At least that's what it looked like when he wrapped his powerful arms around Graveler and dragged him through the portal. And the other being Melora, who fearlessly stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with these things with her two little daggers, was doing a tremendous amount of uh, distraction, if not a lot of damage, and then was grabbed and also summoned through. Just at that point, someone else who had been involved on the side somehow with all of this, a strange person who you've seen multiple times, an older man dressed in white robes, was wielding, referring to, not really sure exactly what he was doing with this, this uh, massive stone book that had been glowing and standing on a pillar of white light. The book seemed familiar. It was very similar to the book you'd found, a damaged version of, that was the record of some members of Argenti Sagex, an old um, plane-hopping organization that seems to have disappeared quite a while ago. This fellow, once confronted, uh, admitted, yes, he did close the portal, that was what he was trying to do. And no, he did not know how to open another one. And he had a lot of other things to do, so he kind of walked away. He did leave you with a name, Tassar, uh, but that's about all you know of him right now. So, the uh, constabulary dropped by, Varendel on his horse, who was chasing after a few of these other uh, stragglers, himself wounded but still determined, is now going to be rounding up uh, the rest of the guards to take a closer look around town. Um, I will say one thing that I did not say at the time is... Uh, he believed that there were more than one portal across the city. But Tessar? Yeah, uh, no, uh, uh, Varendel. Okay. Uh, because he had gone chasing something down by the docks. He had killed it. But in discussing with you, you had accounted for all of the flying creatures that had been here, which is what he had gone after, which means there was a fifth flying creature that he had killed that did not come from this portal. That's okay. one thing I should have made more clear at the end of the last session, but I was running a bit on steam. So, Dr. Marigold, the local um, 
undertaker, I guess you might say, as well as chemist, uh, has come by with his massive wagon and with the aid of um, a few of you and a few other standers by, by bystanders, I should say. Uh, standers by also sounds kind of good, though. Uh, managed to leverage up these bodies, these demonic bodies, which he already notes are not dissipating. They have become full and solid flesh here in this world, which is concerning. Because normally, as far as he knows, that's not supposed to happen. Nonetheless, he's going to take them back to his lab slash preparation room. Have a good look over them as well. So he'll be investigating that for a while. Which leaves the three of you to wonder what happens next. So, what happens next? You are all a bit beaten up, a little bit exhausted. It wouldn't be inappropriate for you to reconvene your meeting, potentially, at the Three Bells. Perhaps returning their sign in the meantime. One of the strange items that was gathered, uh, along with... Uh, I don't have the list in front of me, but you did actually note the list of different things that have been there. Mm -hmm. I believe a log a book. child, a, a child, the sign for the three bells and the log book of a ship that doesn't exist anymore. At least hasn't been in dock for a long time. Yes. Mm. So what do you want to do? It seems for the moment that peace is, is reigning across ale fodder as much as it ever does. I do believe I wanted to ask about who created the sign to see if it had something to do with who was present at the event the other night. Something like that. Okay. Who are you going to ask that and who are you taking with you? Um, well, when we're going to the Three Bells, I'll return it and ask whoever is there for me to return it to. So are all you going back to the three bells? Yeah, although um, I might look around for additional portals. If I if I see one, like on the way back for the, from the, uh, to the three bells. You're literally behind the three bells at the moment. Okay. Because it opened up behind the three bells. Right, right. So that's not a long drive or not a long walk. I'll just go for a walk and see if I can find any portals like in the immediate, like in the nearby vicinity. Yeah, okay. Silas will go in a different direction, do the same thing. So what the party immediately decides to do is split off into three different directions. Okay. <laughs> you gave us an emergency thing. I, that's, that's fair. That's do. fair. Um, all right. Uh, let's and have, Silas will turn on detect magic. All right. That only lasts for 10 minutes though, right? Yep. But his new thing lets him do it endlessly. Ah, okay. The, uh, the thing is, is that we have very random things that the only thing that vaguely has to do with anything is that it involves people who were at the event, with the exception of the sign. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's figuring out how the sign is invol involved with everything else, and then finding the other portals as well. I, I would encourage you to talk amongst yourselves <laughs> as well about that, rather than just talking to me. Um, but I'm assuming Dell implied that, that there might be more portals. We should go look for them. Um. Silas opens up his book and uh, pulls out a blank page and quickly folds it into a tiny book and gives it to, uh, uh, oh, I'm forgetting everyone's name, Medric. Okay. Then he'll do the same thing and give one to Annie. Uh, they're about palm-sized little notepads. He said, uh, you can start a message of your own to anyone linked through the book using these. Nice. All right. It's a little upgrade. <laughs> so you basically just gave us cell phones. <laughs> yep. We have well, walkie talkies. Well, you're texting. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it does take an action to write something in the notepad thing. And it, as uh word it works just like uh sending so it's a limit of 25 words okay. and then a minute later the sentence disappears um one clarification is that send out to everybody or can you target somebody else uh the intention was they could target someone else okay so however it always goes through silas okay so you can you can directly appear in someone else's pad so yeah, text uh, and uh, 
Yeah, we're also waiting for Dudek to show up because he said he would be here and he hasn't been. So right, it's only been a few to moments, mind you. It's a group chat. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> This way, Silas doesn't have to start all the conversations. Uh, that that has been in evidence uh, from your most recent uh, adventure, where you were unable to speak to them directly. So yes, all right. So um, we should wait for Dudek. Go look for portals, or go, or should, should we go look for portals first? Because if we if we could retrieve Melora and Graveler right away, that would save us a lot of hassle in the future. If there's other portals still existing right now we need to find them yes um or we at least need to know that there aren't any left right now so dudek can wait it's not like he can't contact or we can't contact him so yeah and i was just going to like pop in and give this back and ask who who made it while i was giving it back i that was works. explaining on like having a long chat just oh, like, okay, okay yeah do that then so does that mean the others are, are waiting for Annie to go? Yeah, if it's only going to be like 30 seconds, sure. Okay, so Silas is not waiting. No, we need to spread out. They could be anywhere. Okay. Um. I'll go into the three bells with the sign. Okay. Um, you're greeted with a lot of discussion going on, probably talking about the strangeness that just happened practically outside the door. Um, and uh, Sandy is behind the, the counter, kind of talking with someone else and sees you come in. Um, looking a little bit worried, but relieved to see that you seem to be okay. I am like carrying the sign. <laughs> I don't know how big it is, but I figured it's larger than this. It's about <laughs> the size of a shield. Uh, every day I'm like, I don't know why they were grabbing this. But I just want to know who, like, who designed your guys' sign, like, who made it. Sandy takes it with a puzzled expression on her face. I don't know. Was that what all the commotion was outside? Yeah. All I saw was a whoosh, and then, well, I closed the door at that point. Just unlocked it as you came in. What about the sign? Did you want to know? Who made it? Who made it? Oh, well. I'd have to think a bit. I don't know if... I think one of my sisters might know when she goes back into the back. And so it does seem to be a, a small discussion, a couple of minutes longer than perhaps you were thinking in terms of being an immediate uh, answer. Uh, but she does come back out. Um, I believe that when we, moved, when we moved in, when we opened the place, it mm -hmm. was a local carpenter, a uh, name of um, Ohms, I think. Who was at the event? Nichetto Ohms and his daughter were both at the event. O-M-E-S is how you spell it? Uh, O-H-M-S. Okay. The electrical. Ohms on Holmes, he's a carpenter. He is a carpenter, too, yeah. I probably okay. should have him make an Ohms Holmes joke. But I don't yeah. Know. That'll help. That, that links everything together. Okay. We'll be back at some point. All right. Um, thanks for bringing my sign back. <laughs> it's a little bit scraped up. You can see the, the, the claws of the creature kind of gripped into it. Cracked Just a little bit from little, being torn down. Yeah. yeah it's thrown around and the paint is scuffed a little bit. <laughs> but um, she's definitely grat uh, grateful for it. And are you heading out then? In separate yep. directions, or are you yep. going to go together? Uh, I'll stick with magic. Okay. This Sounds is magic. Good. I don't magic. I magic a little bit, but it's more like combining mm -hmm. the, the magic. Piece. Silas will say that if we, if either of us finds one, we should call the others before we do anything. Yes, I agree. Yep. All right. Um, I will get a uh, investigation roll from each group. Um, it's going to be in, with advantage for Silas because of the magic. Um, and in fact, when, as soon as you activate that, you can see there's residual magic around where the portal was fading quickly. Um, and for the other two, one of you two is going to make, uh, the, well, actually you have the choice. You can make two investigation rolls, one each, or one of you can roll with, with advantage. Can we use perception instead? 
Uh, no. Damn it. Um, I'll it's give any as, advantage because it's not as much about perceiving things as it is about following the clues. Okay. I mean, I'll I'm barely advantage. average at, at searching for things, so. I have a minus one for uh, investigation, okay. so. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I'll so cast I, guidance I guess I on am you. Better. Okay. And that you also have guidance. Okay, that okay. can help. I got this. I know you can see things, even if it's not magic. So. That plus a d4. That's a pretty decent roll. Yeah, that's a very good roll. 18. Nice. Yep, and I get 50. Okay. As you spread out throughout the city, which directions are you going in? And you can describe it simply as, you know, uh, towards the water, towards, away from the water, parallel west, parallel east, essentially. West would be taking you towards the, uh, the Raven's Bluff, which is where the Baron's existence is. East would be further along the coast in the direction of, um, well, the farms are out that way as well as the, the, uh, the lighthouse, but they're, mm -hmm. they're not directly East. Well, we know that there was probably something going towards the docks. Yeah. So someone should sense. go that, that direction. Um, I would say because everything is linking back to that party, someone else should go towards Raven's Bluff. It sounds like Silas should go towards Raven's Bluff. All right. Yeah, Any we'll member can go towards the docks. Okay. Um, Annie and Medrick, as you head towards the dock side of the city. Uh, let's see. You see... MJ's uh, tail says hi. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you see um, the signs of where a battle had been. Uh, you do run across one of those flying creatures that uh, 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 Varendel said he wounded one and killed one. Um, it's not on the ground. It looks like he killed it and it's, it managed to sort of fly into a building. So you can kind of see it half sticking out of the second floor of a building. And there's quite a crowd around it. Uh, there's uh, a man yelling at it very angrily and pointing up at uh, probably the damage that was created by this thing. Um, and as you're kind of going around, you feel yourself kind of literally turning your head, um, Annie, and kind of feeling warmth in a particular direction. Um, it's, it's kind of the literal version of you're getting warmer. Uh, and you have a feeling that might have to do with the guidance of Ignis, a slight sunbeam in a particular direction. And as it draws your eyes away from that building... Um, you can see another building where the second floor, um, seems to be, uh, collapsing in on itself. The building itself looks like a former business. Um, but you can see the, the telltale signs that fire had been there. So it was probably an abandoned building. And as you kind of look up towards where the roof, um, should be a flat roof in this particular case, they don't have a lot of snow here. Um, you can kind of make out the fact that the top of the roof has dimpled in. No one seems to notice this. They, it's probably a building which has been abandoned for some time and people just are used to not looking at it. It's kind of an eyesore that's probably falling in on itself anyway, but you have a feeling that based on the direction it was coming from, this might have been coming from that direction. Um, and as you can, do you ask about it or are you just looking yourself? Um, for now, I'm mostly looking. Okay. Um, one of the one of the crowd kind of kind of comes up to you and starts gesturing at the at the sort of weird feather. I don't remember if it had feathered wings or bat wings, but it had it had large black wings kind of sticking out of the thing and complaining to you, recognizing you as a member of the local constabulary yourself, uh, mm -hmm. and then also similarly uh, chastising uh, Medric. Uh, as a representative of Ignis, and how could you let this happen? It starts to berate you. Meanwhile, going further uh, west towards the uh, bluff, um, making your way around um, Silas, you do uh, kind of start to see again the signs of battle. 
Uh, and now that you find a whole be- whole group of people gathered around the corpse of one of those large creatures, all kind of, there's pitchforks and shovels and anything. There's even a, a woman with a, a, uh, a uh, rolling pin just beating away at this f- pretty dead flesh at this point. Uh, it looks as though this one was taken down by the commoners, uh, and they're still intent on meeting out a bit of justice. Nice. Um, you only see the one of them. You don't see multiples and you don't see any sign of the flying creatures. Um, how do you approach that scene as you see that crowd gathered around them? He'll walk up and say, good job, everyone. Where did that one come from? Um, The uh, the woman with the uh, wielding the rolling pin um, kind of gestures to you, and it's not necessarily meant to be threatening, but she was just beating the crap out of this thing with it, so she's kind of pointing with it in your face. Do um, you know one thing about these things? They just sort of showed up here, and then they all all hell broke loose. There was an, an attack. Well, there was a portal opened up over by the three bells. Did you see anything odd here? Did they did they step out of a, a glowing circle, or did they just appear in the middle of the street? They appeared above it, and she kind of gestures up a little bit and draws a circle with her with her uh, with her uh, uh, rolling pin. And as you look up and examine it more closely, it's very, very faint now. You can only really see it from a couple of feet away because it's, it's and only because she kind of pointed out, you can see the faint remains of a glowing circle that was in, about 10 feet up. Um, just kind of fell out of the sky right over there. And then these things scattered everywhere. And she kind of points to a couple of buildings nearby where you can see broken windows uh, as much like what you'd found for the other one. Yeah, things they were trying have- to steal stuff. Did they get anyone? Not as far as I know. No people, anyway. Those of us were anywhere near it. We stood back, and then when we could, well, we went in. It kind of bops the thing on its head. It's it's kind of, you can see now that it, that, that probably wasn't the thing that killed it. <laughs> but, mm. uh, but it does look like it was sort of overwhelmed. Oh, good job. Hopefully nobody was hurt too badly. Um, one of you should probably go to, uh, Dr. Dr. Marigold, Marigold, Marigold. And it is a flower. Um, mm-hmm. I believe he's cleaning up the bodies. About time too. It's going to start to stick soon. Hmm. And is Silas sure that basically that portal is gone now? It's just a residue or does it look? Like he'll toss a rock up to see if it goes through. When you toss the rock up, it, it kind of disrupts the, the, the remaining residue, but doesn't actually move at all. Doesn't yeah. Move through so it. the portal's gone. It's just, yeah, it's kind of like the, the, uh, leftover when you overstretch an elastic band, you can kind of see the whiteness that happens when that's overstretched because mm-hmm. still remains there, but it's starting to, to return back to normal. Okay. Uh, Silas will write a message to the other two, um, there was a portal at Blah Street, um, whatever spot this is. Locals killed the demons. Portal is gone now. Same here. At Blah Blah Street. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Silas will probably look around a little further, but if we don't find any further scenes of it, he'll head back to the three bells. Okay. When you say you're looking around, what are you doing? Uh, Just scanning around with detect magic going a few streets over just to see if there's anything more. But if he doesn't see anything in like 20 minutes, then that was probably it. Okay. Are you going to look at the buildings at all or go inside? Anything like that? Um... He'll go to whatever building kind of made it out the worst, uh, and he'll check if anyone's in there. Uh, Okay. Uh, Looks like the second floor 
of a jewelry shop, a jewelry shop on the first floor, uh, probably living establishments on the second yeah. floor. Uh, and it looks as though there's a, a big smash inward on the second floor and a big smash outward on the first floor. He'll announce himself and ask if anyone's there. Um, and there is a, a gnome in, in and amongst the wreckage of this who's kind of surveying and kind of tittering to himself uh, angrily. Uh, not sure why. Targeted me of all places. Oh, hello. Uh, what did it take? I haven't done a full inventory yet, but I think it was grabbing whatever it could. Uh, and he starts to look around. Oh, blast. I had this beautiful watch on display. I had a buyer all lined up for it before, which is why I had it here in the first place, but they backed out. Beautiful, kind of jeweled, uh, wonderful uh, tinkering from my family back home. Did it have any connection to anyone who went to the ball yesterday? Well, I wasn't invited, so I don't know exactly who went there. But there were some rather wealthy people, I think, there, and generally they are my clients. Mm. But was it borrowed or anything, or was it supposed to go to some one of the local nobles? Well, it was supposed to be sold to uh, Ardwin Cartwright, but he never did come to claim it. I still mm. have it here in case he decided to pay for it, but I was going to charge him more. Hmm. The watch was supposed to be sold to Ardwin? But he hadn't actually taken it yet. No. No, he said something about having had losses on the road and wasn't able to make the uh, the amount for it. It's a hmm. very beautiful piece. I had it all the way Im imported from New Huddleston, but frankly, well, it's not going to be sold to a lot of people around here. Not enough people, not enough people recognize and, and appreciate the mechanical works inside. Hmm. Uh, Silas is looking around. Is anything magical in here? Absolutely. There are a number of magical baubles, amulets, rings, um, pretty much across the spectrum of magic. A lot of them have been knocked over. He's in the process of kind of picking them back up, rebuilding his displays, actually picking those back up, putting those in a box at the moment, and then kind of sweeping the glass uh, away from the, uh, the, well, sweeping the countertop that was broken away hmm. the glasses on the outside from this floor was the watch magical well a bit yes what did Why? it do did you happen to be in the market for a watch no just the attackers grabbed a number of random things and we're trying to figure out the connection most of the other things seem to have seem to have been built by or connected to someone who went to the Baron's party. Oh, I but see. It, Arduin went to the party, but if he didn't actually pick up this uh, this item, then I don't know if there's a real connection. Well, I'm I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, but and he looked a little crestfallen when you said. You, that you're not going interested in buying it. This is a very special, unique, uh, unique watch. Um, it has the ability to be to not only tell fantastic time with extraordinary accuracy, um, but it also allows you to know the uh, the. Or sorry, it allows you to transmit a short message to one of the brokers on another island. It's a new network we're working on, trying to be able to communicate across the island much more quickly without the need of having someone uh, magical paid on your staff. Hmm. It also and has a light. <laughs> nice. <laughs> In the um, uh, uh, just, Mark, to clarify, this watch was stolen, right? Uh, this is what was, it... was taken, yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, I would dearly like to get it back so I could sell it to someone. Or if Ardwin wants to finally pay for it. Mm. Technically, it was still on hold for him, but I did open up offers as potential. Silas is suddenly surprised as uh, Gideon comes over and lands on his shoulder. 
How you doing, Kitty? Um, well, um, yeah. Hopefully, we can find where everything was taken. Uh, we lost a couple of allies. Well, oh, through the other por another portal. I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't think they were after anything other than physical goods. They didn't seem to be grabbing for me, even though I was trying to pretend, uh, trying to protect my goods. Fearful creatures, yeah. though. I don't know exactly what they were. Do you know? Demons of some sort. Demons? Coming here? After all yeah, the other I things we've gone through. Why demons? And why do they want I jewelry? I don't know. Well, it wasn't just jewelry. They tried to steal the sign for the three bells. They tried to steal a woman's child. They stole a logbook for a ship that hasn't been here in years. Well, that's awfully strange. Yes. Well, I think they were just grabbing whatever they could? No, they were searching specifically for things. At least for the logbook, they searched the room until they found it and then left. But, again, I mean, who steals a logbook for an old ship? Someone who wants to know where it's been, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, or, that was my thought, but then who steals a child at the same time? Well, and a sign and a I don't watch. Know about those. But the logbook might be interesting in another sense, though. Um, I'm only a barest novice in magic. I can't practice it myself. Uh, never quite picked up the knack. But the people that help me enchant things um, have told me about a couple of items that they're trying to get perfected. They're really quite interesting. Um, one of them is a sort of magical... Um, what's an amulet? But the amulet will faithfully point the way to, well, something in particular. The way it's enchanted, you enchant it at the time, and it will then forever mm. point at that thing. But one yes. of the things they were talking about was connections. That, um, how did they put it? Parts of things have connections to the holes of things. Something like that. So the idea that the, the, the amulets would work because they contained a small amount of the thing itself. Um, in the case of a home, it, it might be a sliver of wood from the front door. Or in the case of a, of a, of a person, it might be a piece of, uh, of hair. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I took some blood samples from the demons oh, gross. with a similar idea in mind that perhaps we could get back using the blood of a creature from wherever they came from. Well, depending on what this logbook was for, uh, the ship it was for, I mean, I suppose it might maintain a connection to the ship. I don't know if that means anything, but... Hmm. Now, Silas twirls the ring on his finger and says, Yeah. I didn't detect anything magical about the logbook, but... Well, according to one of my yeah. friends... um. A druid, so take that as you will. Spent way too much time in the wilderness, but has an interesting insight from time to time and makes a fantastic tea that I have imported. I have some, if you like. Uh, but um, everything is magical, uh, according to them. Uh, frankly, I think that's a bit grandiose, but... I can... I mean, I can understand the idea. Magic is kind of everywhere, but yeah... Uh, it's definitely something to think on. Um, and, uh, never fear. There is, there are different kinds of magic. Not all of them require you to have a natural talent. Uh, I've, for instance, have been, uh, given my magics by a, a powerful being that supports my people. Uh, you're a cleric of some kind. You could say that. Um, Something I, uh, like that. Yep. <laughs> uh, I mean, technically, really not that different. Um, uh, I worship uh, what we in my clan call the mother. Uh, she helps us fish and helps us survive. And has gifted me with a number of magical abilities. 
So if you're ever interested, I'm sure that there uh, are other ways that uh, that you could learn some magic of your own. Hmm. Well, that might be handy, especially if more of these demon things start appearing, or uh, the the fish things from a while ago, but undead things. There's a lot of naturally dangerous things around here, come to think of it. Yeah, I have been tempted to suggest that perhaps many people of the town undertake some sort of self-defense training. Oh, I hope it doesn't come to that. I no, although... Things, though, that could help. Although it looks like some of the people here did a reasonable enough job. Uh, these things were quite tough. I do have some good neighbors. Although I... He leans in a little bit closer, lowers his voice. I, I think they had help. Uh... Possibly. It'd be interesting to know who helped them, though. There are people around, he says a little evasively. Yes. You look like someone who might be in the market to pick up a few extra things. Is there something I can interest you? I, I apologize for the mess, of course, but I'm sure that I could find something that would suit a, a, a person of your obvious uh, interests and intellect. Um... Very possibly. Uh, I'm afraid I'm in a bit of a rush right now, but uh, I know we... Uh, I have recently come into some funds, and I'm looking to make the lives of my clan better at our little village. So a noble idea, and I can definitely support that. Mm. So when you're ready, make sure to come back to Weatherby's Wonders. I will do so. Thank you, Mr. Weatherby. And if there's something in particular you're looking for, let me know, and I'll get in contact with my uh, my sources across the waters and across the island. I'm sure we can make something good for you. Hmm. Yes, I would be very interested, uh, in particular, in that connectivity, if you wish. I'm part of something similar, but it is much, much shorter range, uh, much l more limited in number. But uh, information is always useful. Uh, the network is growing. We hope to have at least ten sites on ten different islands very shortly. It uh, is immense and helps trade considerably. It's an expensive operation, but I think it's worth mm. it. Well, um, uh, my name is Silas Marsh. If you... The singer? Yes. I saw your show. It was amazing. Thank you. Um, if you, if you come into contact with anyone or, or anything that could give us information on, on how to make a portal to this place where the attackers came from, please let me know. You want to open up one yourself? That sounds terrible. Well, we have, uh, as I mentioned, a couple of allies who were taken. We'd like to get them back. Right. Well, I'm... Afraid or happy that I know nothing about any of that, but I'll keep an ear out and see if there's anything I have to tell you. Um, I, I don't know where you're performing these days or how to get in touch with you. Uh, you can usually leave a message at the Three Bells. I'm there every couple of days, every day or so. Is that the one over on the main street? Uh, it's down by the docks. Oh, okay. I think it was. At least originally it used to be. Possibly that has shifted some. It's about midway uh, between the the um, the main square, the, in, the coming into town, yeah. and the docks. Yep, the one run by the the three young ladies. Oh well, I'm I'm not familiar with it, but I'm sure I can find it. Well, technically, I think they're all older than me, but that's fine. <laughs> um, uh, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> um, I must uh, go back to looking to see if there was anything more. Well, always keep me in mind. I'll see what I can do for you, and I'm sure you'll have a lot of interest in the beautiful things that I have to create. Definitely. And Silas will head out. He'll, Like I said, he'll scout around for a bit just to see if there was a fourth portal or anything. And one of the things and, you notice on your way out is he has a, a case in the back, um, kind of where he'd been storing some things. And you notice you know, there's some there's some extraordinarily expensive items back there. 
Um, there's this chalice that's just made of gold. It's got studs of, of different uh, gems all the way around it. There's, uh, there's a, a beautiful breastplate, which is probably completely impractical as far as, as defense goes because it looks like it's made from probably silver. Uh, that one mm. is actually is magical as well, however. Um, so there's there's lots mm. of stuff in here. And the other thing that kind of makes you think is that watch, while it was probably important, was not the most expensive thing in this room. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah, I actually, Silas would say, um, here, I can help a little bit maybe with uh, keeping potential uh, size will look around at the valuable items uh, looters out um, and uh, he'll use silent image to make a uh, to make it look like the hole isn't there anymore that it's a normal solid wall it was glass or glass then okay uh, basically just, it looks like, oh, no, everything's normal. Yeah. It has, it's static. So it looks as though kind of the, the, everything is fine inside and you can't actually mm -hmm. see through it at all. But, uh, um, uh, he's, he's, uh, grateful that, that should that, help. That it'll only last an hour. So you might need to get to work quickly closing it, but, uh, hopefully it helps anyways. Well, my stock boy is going to go fetch a carpenter at the moment to try to find some way to block up against this. I guess it's a storm type thing, I suppose. Yeah. Well, uh, carpenter shirt certainly should be able to, to help at least board it up for the short term. Anyways, until later. Farewell. Meanwhile with the other two now. Kind of there, you've seen that burned out building. You've seen the mm -hmm. evidence of one of these creatures still stuck halfway through a, uh, a wall. Should we, how do we get up there? No, it's on the I second mean, floor of a building. We see it's a bakery on the first floor. And it's an abandoned building, you say? Or at least well, there's, abandoned? Well, there's two different sites. There's the one where the creature, the flying creature, is kind of halfway out the window. Looks like it got killed and then fell into the into the building, and then there's the burned out building, which looks like the roof has collapsed. Do you think there was a portal up there? I'll ask Annie. Possibly. We should check it out. I'd, well, since you worked for the city guard, I, do we have permission to kick the door in? I mean, does it does it look boarded up? You said, or is it a isn't it a bakery? Well, the the. The creature is on the second floor of the bakery. The the burned out building, it's not mm -hmm. it's not uh, it's boarded up because they didn't want anybody wandering in there. But there's nothing. Okay. It looks like it was probably offices. Okay. Um, I'll go to the bakery first to see if I can get up there to get the thing off of the building. Okay. Um, okay. The baker's in full session. Uh, there's a, it's a bit, it's kind of one of those, it's a, it's a bakery coffee shop kind of thing with mm -hmm. all beautiful sweets there. And they're serving a lot of people because it's become the talk of the area. Um, you do see stairs that lead up uh, over to one side. Star for Eggman Bucks. <laughs> um, it's Aria's Dough is the name of the place. Okay. Uh, but you can take the stairs up where upstairs, um, where you can see people kind of standing, standing around looking at this thing. looks like this is one apartment on the second floor and there's about five people there. Uh, looks like a family as you kind of take them all in, just kind of over to one side of the room, looking at this creature, which is basically the head and the, the chest and a little bit of the stomach's worth is jammed in the building. And you can see that its head looks like it's been split open. A pretty heavy blow. Serves it right. But it kind of crashed into this building. I kind of knock. Want us to get that out of your wall. There's a there's a sort of shocked look and a mutual nod. Kind of all of the, <laughs> all five of this family are kind of like, sure, <laughs> if you can do that, please. 
Um, and you can it, see that it kind of smashed into the room and kind of shoved things everywhere, but they're afraid to go near it. Was it looking for anything? Or did it just crash through the wall? Just crashed through the wall. Don't know. Was it supposed to be looking for something? Am I supposed to give it something? No. They're looking... Well, there were other ones across the city. They were trying to grab specific things. It's the strangest trying to looking out troll I've ever seen. Things. It's massive and ugly. It's not a crow, I agree. daddy. Sure it is. And it's dead. Are you sure it's dead? It's a little boy. I, like, tap it in, in the, the face with the end of my boot. Just, like, nudge. The boy kind of okay. wanders over. The, the mother tries to restrain him, and he kind of wanders over, looks up at you, punches the thing in the, in the nose. Good. Um, <laughs> so how do you get it out of the window? I pull out a crowbar <laughs> out of my bag of holding. <laughs> I can help, too. I'll help, too. And he kind of lines up with his hands on the face. Apparently wants to do more damage to the face. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to also, while trying to, like, I don't know, like, kind of wiggle him out and push him out, uh, I'm going to be very con conscious that this kid is also trying to be there and basically ready to grab him should he end up uh, falling out with the creature. Okay. <laughs> I'll give Annie guidance and also help her move the thing out of the way. All right, so you can either make individual strength rolls or you can make uh, one roll with advantage. Um, you already have advantage because of the crowbar, technically. Yeah, okay. so so, so I, I yeah, so so I can do it, and then if, if Medrick wants to do, do his own roll. Yeah, right, I'll give you guidance too, though. Okay. The child's helping, but he's not going to count as a help. <laughs> he's not that strong. He's probably he's about, helping. about six. A uh, little scrawny little kid. Um, but I'll have each of you make that uh, strength roll in. Uh, make it athletics. Oh, athletics. I'm actually good at that. Twenty-two. Fourteen. Okay. Um, or sorry, no, not fourteen. More than that, eighteen. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it doesn't take you too long. It do, it is kind of caught up in the broken shatters of the window, and it ma makes a little bit of, of an extra effort to try to do this. Um, the the little boy uh, looks like he's intently moving this with all of his might, trying to get this shoved out of the window. Uh, every once in a while, you notice, especially because you're paying attention to him, Medric, he's looking back at his family, um, who look quite dubious. His sister looks kind of proud, and he... he takes a moment from the pushing and shoving to kind of lean back and give a thumbs up to them, uh, <laughs> which means he's even contributing even less at that particular moment than he meant to. Uh, but you are able to, with, uh, with uh, a fairly easy effort, leverage this thing out, uh, and you hear it go crashing down to the ground below, just oh. in the bakery. I scream out the window. Um, there's already a crowd out there and they kind of see the thing moving and there's a lot of shouting and screaming as they think it's coming back to life. But then as it sort of flops down on the ground, there's a sort of quiet and then the kid kind of in the window is just raising both hands and there's a cheer that goes up from the crowd. <laughs> I, I give the kid a high five. Uh, and he's, Sam, he's, I'll wait for the crowd below to know like everything's fine. It's not alive. Hey, and yeah, I'll, I'll also keep, I'll also, or that's the flame keeper. Is. Nah, it can't be. It is. I'll give the kid a high five too. Hey, oh, hot. It's only warm. As your hand is a, quite a bit warmer than perhaps he'd be normally used to. Thanks, mister. Thanks, lady. I would have had it, but you made it easier. We're, we're, we're glad to I help. can't have ruffle his hair. Um, now get out of their way. Uh, I'll ask the parents, did you guys like notice what was going on around here when, when it came through the wall, or? Well, I was still asleep when it happened, says the father. Okay. I, I, I work late, so I sleep late. But, uh, well, damn near woke me out, threw me out of my bed at that point. Um, I was cooking, mother says. 
And just suddenly this black thing bursts through the window. Okay. Did it look... Um, if I look at the body outside, like, out the window, what, did, does it have any wounds? Like, did it crash into the window, like, after it somebody... As, it looks as though something it? hit it in, this, in its head, splitting its head wide open. Uh, it has, well, it has a... Now. It's not really a bird-like head, but it does have a kind of odd-shaped head. It's humanoid. Um, with but is there a way to figure out if that would have happened, like, before it crashed into the wall or afterwards? Uh, I mean... Or I suppose we, we can ask the family. Yeah, I mean, they they don't notice because they weren't watching the thing outside. Uh, the boy was kind of watching what was going on, but he'd run away from the window, was kind of had back to the window before it crashed in. But even just looking at it, like there's no way that it, that the window itself would have caused that kind of split. That was a weapon hit. Um, okay. Which very well could have been the one that Varendel said he, he hit because um, it does look like a strike right across the, the forehead, essentially. But if he had hit Grindel it... would have hit it with a sword, though. It looks like it was flying and then crashed in. Well, it looks as though it was wounded, maybe even dead, but the momentum carried it into the building. Yeah. At that point. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. That's that's what you kind of determine as you do your friend okay. reconstruction of the scene. Uh, with my but, minus one investigation. <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of like, eh, you don't normally split your head open on a building. So that probably happened first. Um. And even kind of looking outside, you can see there's a bit of a spray of blood trail into the building as though it had been bleeding and then just kind of crashed into the building. Um, it had a lot of momentum, though. These things apparently can fly very, very fast, and it was up to speed. So if Varendel did hit it in the face with this, with this sword, that was extraordinarily good timing. Basically playing baseball with a sword and a monster. Kind of. It's like reverse golf. So you <laughs> down, you swing up. And from here, you can see across the uh, street, actually, to that abandoned building, you can definitely make out the fact that the roof has collapsed in on the building. Um, you also catch a slight amount of red, a bright red, very similar to the fur you had seen on those larger creatures. The family is thanking you very much. The mother's trying to get the two kids to clean things up. So do we, do we both see that or the red? Uh, you I were looking we at need... the window, uh, Medrick, so you kind of were paying attention to that area. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to suggest that they board it up and I'll, I'll see what I, we can do to, to help them fix it. Okay. Um. The father literally goes into the room, the bedroom, takes the door off the hinges and start and just basically puts it across the window. That um, works. Gets a few nails, boards it in. It'll do it for now. It's ugly, but it's not a big hole in the wall. And and, and I'll look at the kids. You you do you two stay stay safe, okay? Don't worry. I ruffled boys boys hair again. <laughs> I got this. We sh we should go see what's on the other on the other side of this. Yeah, we should. Okay. Uh, the crowd kind of cheers a little bit. I told you it was the it was the Phoenix Champion. No, you said it was the Flame Keeper. The Flame Keeper was an old lady. No, he's the Flame Keeper now. <laughs> really? Um. So you catch a little snatch as a conversation. It's a title, not a name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you come over to this sort of squarish building. Um, it's probably 30 feet on the side. Uh, it looks like it was offices. You can see there was a place for a sign to be hung, but it's been long gone. The building itself, um, the walls are kind of, um, the building basically nearly burned down. They put it out, but nobody's bothered even to take it down. Um, but they boarded up fresher boards on the front door. And the, as you walk around, you see there's a, a back door as well. Um, as you walk around, you can also note that windows on the second floor have kind of fallen in. And now as you come around the back of the building, you can definitely see uh, more red fur on that second level. Both of you make a perception check. Oops. 
So we're So that's 14 for Annie. 15. 15 for Medrick. So as you're kind of coming around to the other side, um, Are you discussing this as you move around, or are you kind of keeping quiet? Are you sneaking around? How are you approaching this? Walking cautiously, just in case there's still more stuff here. Yeah. Weapons are out. Weapons just in are case. Out. Okay. Um, the building shifts slightly. As I said, it, it hadn't fallen down. They didn't bother pulling it down, but it's definitely not stable. Um. And as it kind of shifts, you see that, that red fur kind of move ever so slightly. And you hear what sounds like a very high-pitched um, but quiet moan. It's only very, very brief, and then it's muffled and then quieted again. I'll go towards the sound. Somewhere I'm going to quickly jot in the thing, hey... Across from Arya's doe, burnt building might be something. Okay, heading over. So, are you going to wait for Silas to come in, or are you going to? Well, you I, wrote I, it I, silently, I think, but yeah, I, I think Medric's already going forward, but I don't okay. want anything to, like, start, and then, like, Silas be as that shit's going down. Okay. Going close to the building, the back door, just like the front door, has been boarded over with newer boards. Um, you can see that the, the front of the building still maintained a little bit of the facade, giving you the impression it had two floors. The back of the building, however, there's a lot more boards missing on that second floor. You get the feeling that when they put out the fire, they probably put a hole there just to dump more water into it. Um, it okay. does have a building next to it, uh, and you have a feeling that was kind of just to save it from being the entire neighborhood going on fire. Um, the uh, the redness and the fur, as you get close to the building, is actually hard to see because it's definitely on the second floor, which is about 12 feet up in total, and you can't really see it when you get close. You could try to scale the building, or you could try to open up the door and see if there's stairs still intact inside. What would you like to do? Or if you have the ability to fly, of course, that always works. I'll open up the door. Or try to. You said it's boarded up? It's boarded up. Crowbar. Yep. It is Daddy. a universal tool. It is. <laughs> there's stuff going on up there. Yep. I've messaged Silas. Good. I'll give any guidance. No, you. I give you the crowbar. Oh, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> I'll give myself guidance. <laughs> but 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 it's Annie's crowbar. She's the only one who can <laughs> use it. She's no, she's attuned I to use... it and everything. So guidance on myself. <laughs> I usually give it to Metric because he he actually has strength. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm an efficient person. It, so, yeah, sure, it helps me. But Metric doing 18. it helps even more. <laughs> This, this is kind of Annie's thing. She convinces people to help themselves. 20. Exactly. Non-natural. Right. Well, With a non-natural 20. A D4. Yeah, these were put on in haste, um, probably by somebody who decided they didn't want people rummaging around in a building that's probably going to fall over. Um, so it's not too hard. There's lots of loud creaks as these, uh, these nails come out of the, uh, out of the old wood. But it doesn't take you that long. Um, how is Silas getting over? Is he just walking over, running over, flying? I don't know who can fly yet, so. Nope. Uh, he'll jog over. Okay. I mean, it's still going to take him a while, but. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say you're about a, a third of the way, so it's not that far away. Um, but yeah, you're able to, to pull the, the, the new boards off of the old wood and the door is ajar. Um. It looks like it was probably kicked in as well, so there's not even any any latch. You pull the door open, and you can see inside that the entirety of the second floor has crashed through. Sorry, the entirety of the roof probably crashed through the second floor, and the second floor itself is bowed down uh, and practically is part of the first floor uh, or very, very close to, to breaking through. Um, 
as you open the door, you hear a voice. Hello? Is there someone there? Hello? Yes. Hello? What's going on? I'm trapped in here. All right. Uh, where are you? And is the thing with the red fur still alive? Uh, it's a bit of a muffled voice still, um, but he's yelling, obviously, to be heard. As for where I'm at, well, there's a whole lot of wood and red fur. And the red fur seems to be not moving. All right, thanks. Quite dead, actually. So you're somewhere on the second floor, then. Could be. Honestly, I, I don't know at this point. I'll grab the crowbar for Medric. I yep. am smaller and lighter. I think the best idea, if anyone's going to go up there, is for it to be me. Yeah. You do because see a set of stairs. Gravity. They, look, <laughs> they look like they've been quite burned, but they may hold your weight. And Medric is like a, well over 200 pounds, so that's not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> I am a petite human in studded leather. You got this, Annie. I'll give her guidance. <laughs> <laughs> you go, girl. Uh, and I'm going to very carefully, like, watching every step. Basically, like, testing before I put my weight on anything. Can I have an acrobatics roll, please? You do have guidance if you want to use it. Actually, is it the next roll or is it any roll in the next minute? It's any roll in the next minute, but yeah. Okay. A few of the steps do break under your even slight weight. Uh -oh. um, you can see that they had been burned practically to charcoal at this point. It's not going to hold a lot of weight. In, in when that when that step breaks, you actually hear the whole building give a little bit of a, cro a groan as the amount of weight which is gathered in the middle of the second floor now part almost and the, the the ceiling of the first floor is bowed down from this weight that's kind of hanging on by a bit of a thread um, but you are able to kind of carefully get up to the second floor and there you see another one of those large ape-like creatures it is face down into this pile in the floor it's obviously not comfortable if it were still alive um, and you notice in the middle of its back, at first you're, you're kind of just taking in the scene, but there's a bit of light because the ceiling has completely and utterly collapsed here. Um, but you see the barest amount of, uh, from this, this light, the barest glimmer of what looks like a dagger sticking out of its back, like right in its back. But the dagger is wavering slightly as if it's really thin. Hello? You can still hear the voice faint now, coming from the vague direction of this creature. Are you under the thing? Behind well, the thing? Where are you? Well, it's it's all over the place. It's really big. And there's wood beneath me, so that's good, right? As long as the wood holds, because I'm pretty small and it, it's barely, so... Well, trust me, I'm smaller, but um, we'll talk about relative sizes later. I can't shift this thing. I can't seem to get through the wood. It's all broken up and piled around me. Looks like I'm going to need a bit of help, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, I will try to get over there, but just be careful, because everything might come crashing down. And I'll yell to Medric, Medric, you might want to move from, like, just stand in the doorway. All right, and I'll make my way to where <laughs> the floor is not about to collapse. Just don't stand underneath, direct, directly underneath the floor that might collapse. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is a sound suggestion. <laughs> stuff in the in the center of the room is the most obvious to that it's going to likely collapse. You're not entirely certain the whole floor isn't going to collapse. Yeah, that's why I said like door frame. <laughs> Medra can do what he wants, but that's my suggestion. Okay. Yeah, I'll go by the door frame. Okay, kind of step. Uh, are you going to need help moving that? Probably, but you probably won't be able to get up here safely. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> uh, crowbar in hand, I'm going to like gingerly walk over. Okay. Um, lift like brace the crowbar on this piece of wood and on and lift under that spot, on, and you got guidance. <laughs> uh, I still have guidance. I didn't okay. use it. Gotcha. 
as you take one step onto this floor, you can feel it start to shift beneath you. Um, you have a feeling that any more weight in this area is going to cause the whole thing to collapse. And if they're underneath this thing, that's not going to be good. Yeah. Oh. I'll say by now, uh, Silas, you're about two thirds of the way there because they've been kind of taking it slow, moving very carefully, and then realizing they needed to think about this a bit more. Yeah, I don't think I can get over there without this entire thing coming down. That doesn't sound good. No. And if are you under the creature? Well, as near as I can tell, there's nothing but a wall of wall of red fur above me, so I'd say that's a pretty good conclusion. Yeah, so if this floor falls, you're going to be a pancake under it. Well, there's nothing I can help with that. I can't move all that much. The wood has kind of uh, boxed me in here. It's okay. I'm not directly against the creature. There's a little bit of wood that's kind of fallen uh, just above me, and that's preventing it from crushing me at the moment, although it would probably be the wood responsible for killing me if it falls. Yeah. So do I see... Can I like figure out where you, where the voice is coming from, even though I'm on the first I'm on the first floor? Make a perception check. If there's a if there's something that right. involves hearing that helps, that would definitely help. Perception is plus two, I believe. Yep. Yeah. So sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, you kind of narrow it down to about a five foot by five foot area somewhere in there, right in the center of the bulge. And you can see okay. the floor is kind of bending down and and uh, bowing considerably. Uh, and somewhere in there, you're kind of making a, the voice. Um, make a medicine check. Let's call it that. Medicine plus five. 21. As you look at the space and the bow that's there, um, they yelled out a little bit while, a little while longer, a little while earlier that they were smaller than mm -hmm. Annie. Yeah, they'd have to be really small. Anything larger than about gnome size would be in a very uncomfortable position. Probably bent in half. Okay, I'm going to need you to talk louder so I can figure out exactly where you are in this pile of wood. Well, and, all right. And I'll approach the bulge in the center. Is there anything in particular you'd like to talk about? No, or knock on the wood or something. Uh, Gently. Well, I can't really move my arms at the moment. Uh, piles of wood around me. Um, I can scratch a little bit if that helps. All right, might as well try. Sure. Might I know the names of my rescuers? Because I'm going to need them having them engraved on my ho on my heart, uh, or <laughs> maybe uh, gravestone if things don't go well. I'm Medric. My friend here is Annie. Medric and Annie. Nice to meet you both. You and the well. name that we would need to put on that possible gravestone. <laughs> uh, for now, call me Horace. Longer introductions are necessary, I think. But for now, Horus will be the name that hopefully you do not have to engrave. All right. So now that I've heard him talking and I'm, I'm approaching like the center of the room, that's like bowing down. Yep. You're do pretty I figure sure, out like you're pretty sure you have a good idea of about a two foot, two foot by two foot spi space. Okay. It is right in the center, pretty much the most vulnerable spot of this room. If anything starts right. to fall, you are directly underneath it now. Are there any, like, boards in that two-foot-by-two-foot two foot area that are looser than the other ones? On the ceiling? Yeah, Many where of the voice are, is coming from. Many are broken up. Um, they look like they were decent wood that probably was soaked wet, so it kind of, it kind of uh, flexed a little bit. Um, you can just make out little, little cracks in them. I'll say by now, as you guys have been cautiously doing this, and there was a little bit of Marco Polo going on as you were trying to figure out where Horace was. Uh, by now, Silas, you've you've kind of reached this burned out building, and you can see the corpse of uh, one of those flying creatures across the street from it, which is your landmark, I think. Um. So if I can't get up there to help move the demon, I can probably, the best bet might be to remove one or two boards from this point and try to drag him out and out outside that house before this collapses. Silas, is there any way you can Basically, stable? you're you're playing Jenga. Pretty much. <laughs> Cautious Jenga. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm out of spells. Otherwise, I could just 
teleport in, teleport out. But uh, is there like any debris anywhere, like beams that have fallen down? Yeah, I mean the, the the whole room was gutted by fire, and then water was poured on top, and then the second floor crashed. You know, basically weakening the the uh, beams that were holding up the ceiling as well. Okay. So you can so any like be beams that are to be around. Yeah, so any beams that are like broken and on the ground, I'll pick them up and brace the rest of the bowed area, except for the two foot by two foot section where I'm gonna like try to break in. Okay. So that way, like I can hopefully. Like the rest of the collapse is going to be stopped briefly and hopefully long enough for me to pull it out. Mm. Silas will help him. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. If you have uh, any skills in um, in carpentry, that would come into play. Uh, otherwise, sell me a skill that would be appropriate. If it's brute strength, it will be harder. If nobody else has anything... Survival? I mean, Medrick would have had to build shelters in the past, like, out of natural mm -hmm. materials. Okay. Um, what I was going to suggest was this is a very delicate operation. Um, so, I was thinking thieves tools in the sense of it's not just breaking locks. It's knowing pressure points and being cautious of that. Um, is Annie still on the second floor or do you come down for this operation? Um, I'm going to go down a couple. I'm going to be kind of down in the, in the middle, seeing, trying to discuss, see if there's anything what the plan is. Okay. And basically discuss if this would work. All right. Um, so, um, how does uh, Silas hope to contribute to this? Hmm. Well, actually, just something that just came to me was, uh, oh, I realized I have the wrong invocation on his sheet. I have to fix that. Um, He's going to cast water breathing so that the guy can breathe. So if something goes wrong and he's buried under, if it doesn't crush him, he can at least breathe. Uh, um, <gasps> I, how would water breathing work for that? Well, I think it lets him breathe in uh, any conditions. Let me check. And do you have to be able to see the target to cast it? Uh, let's see. Uh, I gotta check as well. There's water. www. Okay, no, it does seem specific to underwater. That's fine. And I have to be able to see them. Uh, no, he's just... Hmm. He doesn't have any proficiency in anything that would help. Oh, is it something we have to have proficient pro uh, proficiency in? Or is it just a skill we can use? It's a skill uh, that you can use as the primary thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. It doesn't you... have to currently. Um, you, you don't need to be good at it. You just have to have yeah. an idea. Yeah. yeah. So and a will yeah. to do it. <laughs> he has sleight of hand if we're going along with that uh, gently moving things into position. So Bas basically, I, th I think the best plan would be I'm going to stay in the stairs, guiding people from because like basically I'm going to be like eye level with the floor, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and basically guiding people where where to put things. Makes sense. Based okay. on my knowledge of just pressure points of finessing things to either break open or not break. <laughs> okay. For me, that, that satisfies the requirements of uh, being able to aid at a distance. So that would give advantage. That's why I was wondering if you have a different skill, um, Silas, or a different thing you want to contribute to the plan that would count as another role, and that success can help uh, make the whole yeah. project better. Yeah. Um. 
Well, actually, first thing he's going to do is give uh, Medric Bardic Inspiration. Hey. Okay. What's that look like? Hey, yo. I'll give him a D6. He says, Go on, man. You can do this. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, he'll just roll a sleight of hand check to try to make things more precise. Okay. So with, with Annie on one side saying, no, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, you probably are hands-on actually guiding it, but not supplying the strength in that particular case. Uh, and, yeah, well, uh, I'm not assisting. I'm just, I have to do my own thing because you can only get one uh, right. assistance. So let's start with yours then. Let's start with your, your uh, with Silas's contribution to see where we're sitting in terms of, um, basically I'm treating this like a combined task, but it can go very, very badly, yes. very quickly. 21. Okay, great. Uh, that contributes a success to it already. So you're looking pretty good. It's likely this isn't going to co collapse that quickly. Now, Jenga is his family's favorite game. <laughs> <laughs> now it's Medric's turn with advantage, with guidance, with uh, bardic inspiration if you need it. Okay. So I'm rolling survival. And you're rolling survival because you're looking at making sure this all stays up. Okay, so like advantage a and bardic inspiration. Yeah, and it's like it's like a lean to, except it can't fail. Nineteen can't fail. plus That's a good start. All right, so twenty five in total looks like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you successfully wedge this piece of wood um, just under near where that spot was, but not the uh, not the whole thing because you don't want to crush them into the ceiling. Because that would seem counter purpose. Wait yeah. a minute. Has it been an hour of uh, not doing anything too strenuous? Um, Keep forgetting I'm not a normal caster. Yeah, probably between the, the searching and the coming over here. Okay. I have something for emergencies then if if this doesn't work. Good. What it, what it looks like you've done right now is you have been able to stabilize the ceiling. It's not nearly as treacherous up there and it's holding which means it's not going to collapse randomly like it was just a moment ago. Well, I heard some creaks. That's a good thing, right? I believe so. Oh. Okay, now oh. I'm just going to take apart this board. Can you fit through on board, you think? Like... It depends on the board, I suppose. I'll keep an eye out for any bright light. Right. Uh, Annie, can I borrow the crowbar? How close is the little dude to us? Uh, 12 foot ceilings. So it's pretty high up there. Uh, although the ceilings bowed probably two feet. So about 10 feet up is where the bottom of the bow is. Okay. So he's 10 feet above us. Shit. Okay. Well, 10 feet up. So only five feet above most of you. Okie dokie. Cause, uh, is that close enough to count as adjacent? <laughs> I don't think so. Actually. Depends on so what with you the crowbar. mean for adjacent. Uh, like if you're trying to do, I, I don't know what you're trying to do, so <laughs> I can't really say. He has a spell that can do something if someone is adjacent. So uh, The best would be if you could jump up and cast the spell at the top of your apex. It would make everything harder. <laughs> but I think, well, or, and if you can't or, see or Medrick can pick him up, you know, and just like hold him up. Like Lion Actually, King style? Yeah, you could, you That's could fine. sit on his shoulder. Actually, Silas is just going to ready a spell. Okay. He's going to ready Dimension Door. Okay. Uh, if things start to fall, as soon as the, pers uh, the person is within five feet of him, he's going to teleport away along with the, uh, the little person. Yeah, you definitely have to see them for that to work. Okay. Yep. Basically, if everything comes comes crashing down and they see the person. <laughs> yep. If I get a glimpse of them, bam. If you come with me, you can hold that spell. Yeah. Okay. No, that's what he's going to do. Okay. So it will be cast one way or the other, but um, whether you actually let the magic do its work or just dissipate it. All right. All right. Okay. So what's you're going to try to to crow to? It's still a little bit further below you, Medric. Uh, right. The crowbar is not five feet tall or five feet long. Um, I'll move like a table or Hold something, up. or the, the sturdiest piece of furniture I can find. I'll move it under, or where I can access the uh, the bout area. It's mostly rubble, but I'll say you can get about a three foot pile of rubble. All right. 
Any higher than that, you're going to have to do some serious uh, construction here. Yeah, three foot. Metric is six foot six, so three, three, three feet is fine. Yep, that's enough leverage. Right. Now I'm also thinking I'm going to introduce a crowbar, which has a small button on it. And the crowbar extends to 10 feet. <laughs> extendable <laughs> crowbar. <laughs> There's no gadget the crowbar. It just the, feels the like the crowbar, rod. <laughs> the crowbar has reached that level of, of, uh, of use. So yes, um, it is less dangerous than it was. It's still somewhat dangerous. You have it propped up, which means it's not going to fall immediately. Uh, and the difficulty will be lower, but I will need a roll. This will be an acrobatics roll. Partially because you're balancing on top of the pile, partially because you're you're trying to to open this up carefully and in the in the right balanced order. Feels Damn like it. an acrobatics thing to me. Yeah. I, I'm going to explain to uh, to Horace what is what we're doing um, in order to to try to help make sure that everyone is on the same page. Well, that seems like a non-standard approach. I like it. I'll be prepared to fall gracefully. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Oh. Uh, Medric gets a second bardic inspiration. How does this one come out? Um, don't drop him. <laughs> yeah. Don't drop this guy. It would be bad. Yeah. And M Medric will thank Ignis. Guide my hand. And I get to guidance again. I kind of want to do here we go. Heat, heat metal on the, uh, on the crowbar now. for Seven. Fuck. Yeah, oh, and uh, Silas is getting ready as Medrix. I have an too. inspiration. Can I give him my Wait. my inspiration to uh, reroll yes. at seven? You can. Oh, yes. Okay, so rerolling at seven. Because right now you're at thirteen, which is not enough. Yeah. Okay, nineteen. Oh, that's better. Twenty-five. Usually, me gifting my inspiration results in a one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-five total. All right. So. Thanks, uh, Annie. I didn't see like where I was heading there. So. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. There was there was a case where it's like, no, no, I think that's structural. You don't want that particular piece of wood. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can hear the little crack as you put some weight on it, and then you're quickly redirected to another one. Uh, and yes, you are able to to crack open a uh, a one of the pieces of wood in the ceiling, uh, revealing about a, a three foot long by about a six inch wide hole. Aha! This looks new. Can you squeeze through that? Uh, I'm a little pinned. I will see what I can do. Uh, and you kind of uh, so if he's, is he pinned by, by the by, by the uh, demon? Well, he was he was basically pinned by the wood. Okay, as he described earlier, yeah. the demon is kind of on top of him, and then on top of the wood, which is pinning him down. But gotcha. Um, so I'll if... grab the crowbar with two hands. Actually, uh, no, I'll, I'll, grab my... I'll, I'll, I'll make a suggestion before we grab the crowbar more. <laughs> uh -huh. Are, are you able? To, are you guys able to see him? And could Medric lift up Silas to, mm -hmm. to have him dimension door? Yeah, can Silas see the guy? Not from the ground, um, but his voice is coming from just basically inside this this hey. hole. I'm assuming you lift didn't want to up. stab him with the uh, the crowbar, so you didn't directly <laughs> go straight at him with the crowbar. I'll give the crowbar back to Annie and I'll just Silas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Silas, come up here, and I'll lift Silas up. Okay. <laughs> as, as you get closer, uh, you can see in the hole, and you see uh, turning uh, his head to your to you, what looks like a very large rat, wearing a very nice felt hat with a feather on it, and looking rather embarrassed by the whole being caught in the wood situation. Oh, hello. Uh, Silas is kind of boop his snoot and finish the spell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And where Weird, do you go? Tell it uh, let's see. We're teleporting just outside. All right. Silas vanishes from your shoulders and reappears outside. Uh, and there's a little bit of a, uh, still a graceful, uh, fall because he was about five feet up from the ground when you boop the snoop. <coughs> uh, but he does, uh, let's see, let's actually make him do a roll. Let's see. But it's, it's not 10 feet and it's not being pressed by a giant creature. Wait, you said there was a rat in a hat? It was a rat in a hat. He gets a 21 to twist in mid midair and in fact manages to do a bit of a, of a somersault and bow. And you can see it does appear to be a rat like humanoid in very fine clothes. Uh, and, uh, he kind of bows and then sweeps the hat off in a, in a beautiful gesture at the end. Thank you. Most spectacularly, sir. That was thrilling. 
Come on out, you two. All right. I leave. <laughs> I also leave. And then you can hear the the floor kind of creaking, or the ceiling actually creaking behind you, as the whole building kind of shakes and shifts a little bit. The even the small amount of weight that this person had does cause it to start to resettle a little bit. You can see the outer wall starting to shake a little bit. It won't take much for this whole building to come down. But I'm going to suggest, uh, like, kind of crowd control that people move away from this building. <laughs> Uh, and uh, upon spotting the two of you come out, you see this short rat human oid thing uh, mm -hmm. with with a, a broad smile of delight, which is both charming and somewhat disturbing on a rat face. <laughs> Aha! These might be my two my two saviors. One of them uh, a medric, and the other one an Annie, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Helped as well. You start to gesture, moving away. Um, he's like, Ah! One last thing. And he sticks two fingers in the sides of his mouth and gives a whistle and kind of holds out his hand. And as the building kind of shakes a little bit and you're moving further away, he's, he's kind of holding out his hand as he's walking with you. You know, this day has been rather extraordinary. And you can see <laughs> landing in his hand what you had taken to be a dagger before, Annie, mm -hmm. you now realize is an appropriately sized rapier with two small wings as the hand guards on either side that lands perfectly in his hand. He shakes it off to get rid of the small amount of gore that's still left on it and sheathes it. Well then. And, and as he's about to speak, you can hear the whole building kind of shifting sideways, kind uh, of dramatically we, we falling over behind you. Leave this immediate area. We walk slowly towards the camera. Exactly. Slow motion. Exactly. <laughs> Well, it's so much better to welcome friends and rescuers than to welcome mourners and those who are just a little too late. Uh, oh, and to you, my good sir, uh, my third rescuer with a magical touch, I thank you as well, bows quite graciously. My name is Horace, or as many have called me over time, and I don't exactly disagree with the epithet, although time has made it something I'll live up to, I suppose, you may call me Slugsworth. And you Why are sir? Slugsworth. Ah, uh, it's a difficult to, to describe, mostly because I've forgotten most of it, but people kept insisting on calling me that name. I liked Horace a bit more, but if everyone's going to call you a Slugsworth, and they don't really seem to mean it as an insult, you might as well accept it. Strange. Do I know anything what? about the name Slugsworth? Seems rather strange. Yeah. Um, and you, sir, addressing Silas, who might I say is my third rescuer today? My name is Silas. Silas Marsh. Silas Marsh. That's a noble name if I've ever heard one. It has like only a few syllables, but perfectly rounded. Silas, Annie, and Metric. Well, well met. Well met indeed. And how, well, pray tell, did you end up underneath that creature? Well, that, I think, is a tale best told over ale. Now, I don't want to alarm you, but my appearance might alarm others. So if it was a more discretionary ale, it might be better. I have no knowledge of whether you know of other, anyone other than myself that has this particular appearance. I certainly have never met one. But then again, if I have, I might have forgotten it. So many things seem to have been forgotten. Um, as somebody who has studied the peoples of the islands and other islands, um, do I know anything about this type of humanoid? Um, make a history check. Oof. Mm -hmm. Stories tell of mouse beings you know that there are um cat-like beings that exist um which probably wouldn't go very well with this rat-like being you see in front of you there are creatures that are described as rat-like but nothing that you're familiar with again aside from some legends and they're mostly the princess tales of talking animals okay 
Somebody is going to clean that up, isn't? Aren't they? He kind of gestures at the uh, the building, which is now it's more sagged over than fallen over. And is it of, like going in on itself? So at least it's 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 more that the 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 few boards that were holding it straight are no longer holding it straight. So it's kind of sagging in on itself and sort of sort of reaching. The second floor is kind of folding in on itself. So now it's a one and a half story trapezoidal be, be a building. <laughs> Um, terrible creatures, especially when you snuggle their fur. I recommend not doing that. I mean, if it looks like it's going to collapse onto itself, I'm not as worried, but I definitely would, um, like, mention to, to people to keep away from the building. There are a number of, of looky-loos kind of coming from the other direction, but every time the building kind of creaks a little bit, they step back a bit further. Look, there's another one of those things on top of it. What? What do you mean? As they're starting to be able to see the fur. They couldn't see it from the ground before. Yeah. It's dead. I'll reassure them. What's that? It's dead. Of course it's dead. What do you mean, of course? It's not moving. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Is there any, like... You Usually, who would take care of this type of thing? The fire brigade? Um, Or city planners, or, you know... It would be something that Varendel would know the chain to go through. Yeah, I, w I would then um, suggest to one of the onlookers to go find Varendel and to let him know that this needs somewhat urgent dealing with. I'll just go talk to the nearest guard. Yeah. <laughs> and he starts heading towards the dock instead of up towards the towards the windmill yeah. where the actual place is. If you get the feeling yeah. there's like, I can pass the buck easier if I go this way. Probably. Um, uh, and I'm going to also like delegate some somebody else to keep make sure keep, someone keeps people keep keep their distance. Just basically, on onlookers of like, don't let anyone get close to this building. I'm assuming that the rest of you are still on the far side of the building and Annie has kind of stepped into the crowd. Is that a fair yeah. assumption? Um, kind of taking charge of that moment. And you can see that, that Slugsworth uh, is a little shy to be seen. And you get a feeling, as he mentioned earlier, that it's more that he doesn't want it to be shocked by what they see. Silas is going to lean out so enough that you can see the crowd and yell, do any of you have a problem with a person who also looks like a rat? He seems pretty cool. Well, that's a very fine judge of character and a very forward way of approaching that. I never thought of doing it myself. Then again, people are usually screaming when I try. And there's a whole crowd kind of like, what? What What, what do you mean? Silas will gesture and make a rat person in different clothing. <laughs> like uh, this. There's a bit of laughter as they assume that you're trying to uh, lighten the mood by putting on a show. But they don't so none of you are, understand. So none of you are scared of that. Someone calls out, it looks so funny, make it dance. I mean, I can dance if you think that will make them happier. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the, if you're walking around with no, us, people I mean, should assume you're safe. Science will just turn back and say, I don't know, they seem okay with it. Well, that's a better reception than I think I've gotten. I don't remember specific receptions other than the general impression that they didn't go well, but perhaps it'd be different. That's always refreshing. Well, Silas steps aside and says, come on out, and dismisses the illusion. That Everyone, I'd like you to meet Horace. And Horace kind of steps out, takes his hat off, and kind of holding it with two hands, a little bit trepidatiously. Hello, everyone. As mentioned, I am Horace. Pleasure to meet you all. And there's clapping going on. Wonderful trick. Awesome. Keep doing it. They seem not, not a to trick. Really He's a person. Or if, if they think it's a trick, they'll, they'll leave us alone. Mm. Yes. Well, how do you make it talk like that? I can't even see your lips moving. And well, there's that also reaction, I suppose. Well, at least they're not going to going to hunt you down or anything. So. And I don't think most people would, would try to hurt you when you're with us. Well, then I have definitely accidentally landed in the perfect spot. 
You know, you almost have. being crushed by that big hairy beast was probably the best thing that could have happened to me today. How did you end up on the second floor of that building? <laughs> Tales are told over ale and food, my friend. Right, do the three bells? I mean, I'm sure we can explain his presence to uh, our friends. Maybe Apparently no one possibly can hear you. <laughs> I mean, part of me is going. We, the way we met was helping them with a rat. Yeah, I still have the hat, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> all comes um, full circle. A three-year plan finally culminates. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would suggest. D does he have, like, a cape or something? He is wearing a small cape, yes. Okay. As well as the beautiful hat. There is a part um, of you, Annie, mm -hmm. which has to fight your youthful memory. You're kind of thinking of it now, and you're going, God damn it. He kind of looks like a stuffed toy you had when you were a kid. A little too much. Not exactly, not perfectly, but he's kind of looks like a, a, a jolly, somewhat ra round in the stomach uh, rat dressed in very formal clothing. Uh, it may not have been your toy. It might have been one of your sister, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, Was your toy named Slugsworth or Slugworth? Because if so, <laughs> we have some questions. It was probably named Mr. Rat or Ratty or Reticulous. Reticulous sounds right. Yeah. But it just sort of strikes you from a certain angle. It's like, oh no. And that, that image kind of haunts you a little bit because it makes you want to laugh every time you see him. Or maybe he does. I don't know. That's up to you. Yeah, probably. A little bit. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I've got a disguise kit, but there's only so much that that can do. He's about a foot tall. Okay. So oh, smaller than I thought he was like three feet tall. No, no, he's about a foot mm -hmm. tall. He's okay. much shorter than a gnome. Because hmm. if we can get him into the three bells and into my room, we can have bring ale up to my room. Yeah. That okay. That Are you would discussing be this that, that, out loud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Uh, so you feel, unlike my friend here, that my presence in this alehouse might be somewhat disruptive. I can mend this situation somewhat. Mm -hmm. Would it help if no one saw me? I can just carry you under my cloak or in my backpack if you want. Well, while being ferried about by servants and friends is somewhat uh, appreciated, I can do something a little bit better than that, if you so desire. It, it might be... No offense, but the way that we and that I ended up with this long-term residence was helping them with a rat problem. Oh, so. I see. I thought it was a mess problem. <laughs> well, either way, those domestic cousins, I suppose, of my particular anatomy do present a certain problem. I can understand this. Well, I had kind of guessed there might be some issues, but nonetheless, I do have a trick that I can pull which can make it much easier. Uh, don't want to disturb you, but you do seem to be quite capable folks. Perhaps this will not bother you at all. And he reaches up one paw, taps it on the side of his long nose, spins in place, and turns invisible. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to suggest that, well, then we, we should get to the, the three battles. All right, follow us. Or I'll climb speak nary a peep unless necessary, but I'll be here. Perfect. Who is he hitching a ride right on, or is he walking behind us? He doesn't seem to be climbing on anybody, but you do hear okay. his voice from time to time, keeping up with you. Perfect. Just make sure um, you don't step in front of me, because I don't want to be responsible for, for accidentally stepping on you. Everyone is taller than me. I'm used to keeping away from feet. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll go to Three Bells and get some ale and go up to the room. All right. You don't hear him, because he's very, very careful about that. And you get up to the room. I'm assuming everybody is there. Yeah. 
And then, sitting on your bed, he appears. Ah, thrilling. A little bit of hiding is necessary, I find, from time to time, and I've found that I can summon that ability at least once a day. That's useful. It is. It did me no good when I was being buried by some bothersome beast, but <laughs> it's only so many tricks one can pull. Yeah, so how did you get on the second floor, and did you see that beast looking for something or carrying something? Oh, please, first, one question at a time, and always ale first. I hand it around. Um, Wait, that that mug of ale is almost as tall as you are. Are you going to be okay? I'll be quite wonderful by the time this is finished, but I perhaps <laughs> should slow down somewhat. I don't want to drown on the day I almost suffocated. Um, and you can see him kind of reach in, uh, kind of a small pack on his side, and there's a very small tin cup he, pick, he pulls out, and he just keeps dipping it into the, the stein of beer. I assume it was Steins or something you pulled out from. Probably. Um, taking a sip. Ah, quite a fine vintage. So much better than the swill I vaguely remember having drank. You know, memory is such the terrible thing. At least I think it is. If I could remember more of it, I'd probably be more disturbed. <laughs> Still. It's brewed in house. It is quite good. Well, then, my best to the, the, to the brewmaster. Maybe I'll find my way to getting a bit more later on. Still. Where were we? How he ah, ended yes. up there. <laughs> a, a bit of food. Did you get anything to nibble on by any chance? Feels like I haven't eaten in ages, which may also be true. It's not entirely certain. I mean, I'm sure uh, I can run down and grab something. Perfect. Perfect. You are the most genial of hosts, rescuer <laughs> supreme, and the most intelligent and wonderful of people. I'll go and grab, like, a tray of <laughs> snacks. Charcuterie board. Charcuterie board! <laughs> Not a problem. Um, no, I want fancy cheeses, Dan. <laughs> Same. Uh, and once presented with the food, he takes a few nibbles of a few things. This is exquisite. This bread, is it made here too? Do they make everything here? Tell me, yeah. do they have a farm out back too and raise the chickens and cows and everything else? <laughs> Not quite to that, but... <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes, they're quite they are indeed. And he kind of sits back, kind of rubs his stomach a little bit, which is not swollen out that much. It was already a little bit prodigious, but he does seem a lot more comfortable and calm. Ah, now this has been the reception I had hoped to get. Rather, the reception I always hope to get. And they rarely do. You are so kind. Now, as for whatever tale I can offer you, I do apologize, as I have tried to indicate... My memory is not once what it was, or rather I assume it was better, because to assume it was either worse or at this stage makes, well, rather, makes me rather sad. Mm. But I can tell you a little about where I just was. As for who I truly am, that might also be somewhat difficult, as I feel like, well, I feel as though I couldn't possibly be the person you see before you. You see, I don't think I was born this way. It feels rather um, inappropriate. And he kind of swishes out a tail. This I don't think I've had for very long. Or at least it doesn't feel like it's entirely part of me, although it's very useful and doesn't get in the way. No, I rather think that I was probably born different. Or rather the same, I suppose, as any one of you. I've entertained the thought that I perhaps was at one time an elven diplomat. Yes, that feels very right. Except I'm not really sure if I would be comfortable with the shorter ears. And he kind of gestures to his fairly prodigious uh, ears at the moment. So maybe um, a human courtier. Yes, I can imagine myself making quite the splash at all the best parties and all the best people. That seems a little more likely. But that... I don't know. So you think you were cursed somehow? I mean... Far be it to say that this is exactly a curse. This form is not exactly my natural one, I suspect. Uh, but it does feel all mine, and does come with benefits. Some tricks I can pull that none other have been able to, at least as far as I know. Plus, I was gifted with this outrageous outfit, and I would imagine it took some time to make something like this. And my wonderful weapon. He whistles again, and the sword flies out of his scabbard. 
and kind of hovers midair. You can see the little wings on it. Are Flying actually, swords are the actually best. Floating. Uh, this, my friend, um, I call it Ajete. It's just really a fancy way of telling it to go stab someone, which I'm not going to do in your presence. I, I promise I will not bring any, any harm to those who have who've, uh, saved my life so quick, so well, uh, wonderfully, as well as fed and watered me so well. But, as I said, I feel more like a Horus, but no one calls me that. And others have called me Slugsworth, so I suppose that might be my name. It does seem... Others like from this town? Oh, no, I've never been here before, at least as far as I can tell. I'm not even sure where here is. The last place I was was considerably different. Mostly depressing and very red, full of rocks. And very depressed people. Most of them, I think, were dead. Or dying. Did you see, and I'll describe Graveler and uh, Melora. Did you happen well, to see them in that place? I have seen many a woman, but no one seems to exactly fit that de that uh, description. But then again, I have not met all the women that inhabit that place. As for your other friend, I've never met anyone quite that small, but there are many larger ones that seem to stump about all over the place, seem to be somewhat similar at least, if not necessarily the direct, uh, the direct one. Maybe he's had a change of existence, or maybe he comes from there. Maybe he's a child. Look at that. He might be a child. How strange would that be? Still... I'm afraid I don't know the two companions you've lost, and I wish that I could say otherwise. Uh, however, hmm. that place, which I had been in for, well, an indeterminate amount of time. Time seemed to be standing still while I was there. There was no sun, no moon, no clouds, nothing to guide my time. But then I felt no need to eat or sleep or drink, so I suppose there are benefits to a timeless place. I could not see the sky overhead nor make out any stars, but it always seemed to be somewhat dim and reddish in hue. There was, I believe, some form of illumination over the entire space, cast over by, um, I suppose it must have been a lighthouse, with twin lights, no less, far twin off in the, in the distance. But yes, a depressing place. People had very little to talk about. But I Sounds feel like another like I, dimension. Oh, most assuredly, either that or the most depressing town I've never been to. Hmm. Perhaps yeah. Dudek would know. Yeah. Perhaps. Right. Wasn't he on his way to? Uh... Yeah, wasn't he on, on his way here? Supposedly, he was on his way to meet you somewhere, but you're not sure where he was coming from, given that he <laughs> literally could be halfway across the world. While that's only a few doorways away, it still takes some time to get door frame is located, um, which has now been collapsed because the, the, uh, party is over and they're starting to, to pack up all of the carnival things that they had. So his doorway and his museum would have been collapsed down to be put back on to, um, I believe it was the fresh bread was the name of the ship. Um, okay. um, yeah, I thought the museum was on the ship. The museum was in, it was rented, it was a, a warehouse on the dock, which was rented. Okay. Okay. Um, and he had unfolded essentially never his, his good things that were there. And in the back room, he had installed his door case, which was actually okay. the doorway to his other dimension or his other space. Okay. But regardless, he's not here yet. You're not sure why. Um, it is possible that he ended up talking to Marigold or Verendel or many other people, um, but he didn't find you outside. Um, yes, well, if it is another dimension, which is not entirely un unpossible from the few things that I seem to remember, I couldn't give you a name other than it was awful. Let's call it awful. How about the awful place? I'm going to call it the awful place. And these large beasties, the ones in red and a few others, dozens of others, to be honest, seem to be working on things. There's a great pile of dark stone that they put together, directed by, well, I didn't see exactly who it was. I tried to pay attention for a while, but it gets so boring when nothing changes. Nonetheless, they assembled all these piles of stones into rough arches. Then there seemed to be some magical what's-its going on, 
The archers seem to come alive, the stones seem to light up with writing of some kind, and then, lo and behold, an opening through which these large creatures decided to uh, pile through. After seeing one of them do that and come back again, I decided it would be good to follow them to see where they went. And so I did. And uh, I ended up uh, apparently on the roof of that building, at least briefly. The roof seems to be, um, seemed to have been rather unstable. So at that point... And you had hmm. you had your sword and your fancy clothes in that dimension already? Well, I've not been naked recently, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. I could be, if that's what you're preferring. It's rather forward on the first, uh, first meeting. Yeah, perhaps, yeah. But Carry on. <laughs> With the story, not taking your clothes off. Well... I will admit that that's partially a jest. You see, this form that I have in front of you, the one with the clothing and all the other accoutrements, is somewhat, well, let us say it stands out. And so, if necessary, I can. And he kind of leans back a little bit and rolls, and then suddenly the clothing and everything seems to just vanish. And you see nothing more than a gray rat lying on the bed, looking up at you, making Whoa. rat-like noises. And then he kind of rolls over again, and the clothes kind of expand out. Uh, the sword was also missing at that time. The hat seemed to vanish into nothing. It is a useful trick, this one, as well. Similar to the invisibility, but one I can do whenever I need to get away from anyone. You would be amazed. It's like you're a werewolf, better at. This is cool. Well, I suppose. Um, you would be surprised how many people find the appearance of a rat with clothing to be somewhat disturbing, but while they don't like a rat being around, they don't generally think too closely about it. So I've made it out of a few scrapes like that. At least I presume so. There's a memory of an escape like that. Nonetheless, on the roof, was not escaping at this point. I had run through after the creature. It seemed to run up and then over. It was a most disorienting step. As I leapt sideways into this hole and came up uh, from the floor. Well, imagine my surprise when the thing was watching the, the hole it had come through, I suppose, waiting for one of its companions or something. So I then brought forth my sword and put forth my efforts. And I was successful. <clears throat> Aside from the fact that it fell over in my direction. That was an oversight, in uh, retrospect. I should probably have found somewhere else to move, but the ceiling, did, or the roof, did not seem large enough to make a sprint. And thus, in a way, shortly after that happened, and when consciousness was returned, I heard the two of you initially rooting around in the basement. Or I guess it would have been the first, first floor. I made my call, and here we are. Simple as that, really. So, I hope my tale was amusing, if not entirely filled with all the things you might wish to know, because there are many things I also do not know. For example, where actually am I? You're in the town of Elthvader. Elthvader, all right. Can you be a little less specific? I look to my friends. You're specifically in the Inn of the Three Bells, in the town of Elfutter. Well, I was thinking more broadly. I oh. presume this is an island? Yes. Uh, you're muted. Uh, you're, you're, you're muted. I forget which island. Now, now that I started this, the sentence, we're I think on we're the in island. Ascus, maybe? Ascus yeah. is the island. Ascus, yeah. yeah. I was like, Icaro, no, no, that's wrong. Uh, Icaro's the neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on the island of, of Ascus, kingdom of Alaria. And then I'll go, and yeah, that that's is broad. Ah, and everybody those. seems to be confused, and nobody knows what's going on in general. Well, it's like everybody's memories got torn apart. And I see you're no exception. Well, that seems like a an interesting coincidence, or perhaps a fortunate circumstance, I suppose. One does get to reset somewhat when one forgets a whole lot of things. As for the names Escus and Alaria, those do sound familiar. Well, that sounds good, because I believe that I once came from here. Now, as to when and how and who, I'm still quite vague on those things. 
I find that oftentimes it is being mentioned, uh, things being mentioned that drives my mind towards recognition. I cannot generate the ideas myself, but I can recognize them when they're spoken as such. So, there we are. Which island were you from, if you remember? Still somewhat vague. I so, feel like it must have been somewhere in, you said the kingdom of Alaria. Interesting. I think of it as an island. Uh, it perhaps, is one of the three. Ah, well, perhaps some one of those, perhaps, or perhaps uh, Alaria itself. I, it Alaria is familiar. one of the three islands in, in the kingdom. It's island, uh, Alaria, Eskis, and uh, Icro. Well, then. I suppose then I have somewhat found my way home. It's a bit more vaguer home, perhaps, than I left, but there is something to be said for that. Indeed. As for the. Would you happen to know? Uh, could you describe how they assembled these uh, stone arches and what was on them, the writing? Because we need to go back there to rescue our allies. Right, right. Well, I did not see them open them on this side. And they didn't seem to be the same collection of stones, so I don't know um, precisely about that. As for the stones on the other side, if I make my estimate, I think that the arch reached about 15 feet to 16 feet on top. Um, the stone was a very common stone. It had a very strange uh, behavior. When all of that magical what's-it energy stuff was being pumped into it, well, it made a rather disturbing sound. It sounded almost as though it was people screaming, which was very, very disturbing. And as I saw the first one of those I observed uh, come to its conclusion, the stone itself seemed to turn to grey ash and collapse, which means those, those portals are short-lived at best. As for the writing itself, I could not make it out from, my, from the distance I thought was safe. By the time I was close enough to notice any details, I was running like mad to try to make it through the hole. So I didn't take note of any of them on the way, I'm afraid. That's okay. Hmm. Now, as for your friends, well, I suppose you describe them as allies. I may have presumed too much to call them friends, but you seem like the friendly sort. As for them... Yeah, they are our friends. Well, they, they might be all right. While the place was somewhat depressing and this strange activity was going on, and those creatures themselves are ornery if ordered, depending on where they came through and when, it's not inherently dangerous most of the time. As I said, I don't think I had been there very long, time being difficult to measure with nothing to interrupt it, but... I would say that it was probably no more than a week. I had observed some normal behaviors back and forth, and it seemed like they had happened about seven times in a row, which would be about a week. Uh, but as for... Sorry, I'm trying to remember how long the weeks are in this world. <laughs> I think they're ten days, but... <laughs> um, no, they're seven. Are they seven? Okay. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I wasn't entirely crazy uh, in my world building. Yeah, um, it's 12, 12 months with seven days, and then a two-day month. Oh, right, Festin. Of Festin, um, and it's twenty. I, I I think you did like it's seven day weeks exactly twenty twenty days. Okay. Uh, twenty eight days. Twenty eight days. Twenty eight days later. <laughs> so I spent a lot of a lot of time. Oh, did you freeze? in the last campaign? <laughs> um, no. Okay, I heard. I, I spent a lot of time in the last campaign. That's all the words I heard. Yeah, you froze up for a second. Yeah. Oh, oh. I heard everything though. Who, looking at the calendar. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, I'll be right back. Sure. Can I also take a washroom break? <laughs> yeah, we can take five for a moment. Uh, I will right. just. It was uh, just like about like twenty minutes ago. Like I need no, to and I was trying to find a good <laughs> landing point here. We didn't quite. Yep. So we will be back in a, a couple of minutes. Right back. Yeah. And much like the characters in our story, we have been fed and watered. And continue to be fed and watered. Um, I think that, you know, the conversation obviously lasts longer than we're going to do it in real time. 
Slugsworth, Horace, is entertaining. It's clear that he knows a lot of things about how things work here. It's not like he's an alien coming from another world. But many things seem to be, um, I guess, nonspecific. He doesn't remember a lot of details, but some of the procedures. And one of the things that you notice, Annie, over time as you talk to him, he had to have spent some time at court. He's got exquisite manners. He is very eloquent. He's uh, always keeping it very pleasant, even when talking about unpleasant things. Um, And that is the kind of skill which is not only trained into you, but you practice heavily when you're at court. So at least that part of it, whatever else, um, seems to be something that can be said to be true. Um, He's also skilled with a rapier, clearly. Um, Or at least has one which has skill for him, if not his own. Um, Now, does the name Horace, like, knowing, like, the general lineage of my family, but also just general nobility that would spend enough time at court, does the name Horace ring a bell? You can make a history check. With the context of maybe somebody who either just kind of went missing or something, maybe even. Nineteen. Um, as you think on it, there there have been a number of Horaces that have been there in the in the books uh, over time. Famous and not so famous. It's not it's not an entirely uncommon name. No particular Horace stands out to you, but it isn't uh, an unfamiliar name at court, the, that kind of name. Now, that's the name he said he chose for himself mm-hmm. as well. So yeah, um, it could be that he's thinking about another Horace when he's think, saying that or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll ask, uh, I'll ask him, do you, do you have any, uh, other than Horace and, and Slugsworth, is there any other name that might ring a bell? I'm trying to see if I can figure out if if you think that you weren't, that this isn't you as a way to simplify it. I'm trying to think of who you might be. What an intriguing notion that no one has done for a long time for me. Try to establish who I might be rather than taking me as I am. Now, granted, I'm not entirely unhappy with who I am. I may be small in stature, but I'm grand in design. But, um... I'm afraid there's not much that comes for detail for such a question. I, it is as though I once knew these things, just as, just as a mark on a floor might indicate where a chair sat for a long time. You can no longer recreate the chair, but you knew something was mm-hmm. there. But what kind of chair, how it sat, you do not know. Who sat on it is even harder to determine. Determine so. As I said before. Things coming to me, as in they're shown to me or spoken to me, sometimes jog a memory or a thought or design, but I cannot generate them on my own. And the name Montrose doesn't ring a bell. Montrose. Sounds royal to me. Is that right? It seems right. That would be. Yes. Yes, I think it is. Some sort of royalty, yes? Yes. Well, that's something. You just seem like someone who spent time at court, just from your mannerisms. That is a very delightful thing to say, and I'm very happy that I live up to such a standard. It's not something that you see every day, so it stands out. No, indeed. Most of the places I remember visiting recently had no such decorum as court. Uh, The places I said, the awful places I've named it, had nothing like that. Well, nothing that I had any access to. I was told there was a lord, and I was told that there were many people that were vying for power, but I do not remember ever being in their presence. Do you know who the lord was? No. No, and I never got caught glimpse of much more than the creatures you saw, those large, burly, red-covered, furry things, and the other ones, the ones with flapping wings and sour dispositions. 
There were a few others, one that had four legs and two arms. Um, I don't remember what they were called. Centaurs? No, no, they did not have the body of horses. More the body of almost like enormous cats, I think. I do not know who they were, but I stayed well clear of them. And if there were a, a smattering of dwarves and elves and humans and gnomes, I do not believe the elves were getting along with anyone else. I seem to recall they were fighting something. Someone? Maybe someone. There was a... There was a... I think there was a tree. What would a tree be doing in a place so desolate as that? I must be wrong. Perhaps my recollection is not so strong in even the things I think I remember. A tree. That, that's... I'm sure that's wrong. Maybe not. Nonetheless. I guess we can't confirm this until we go back. But... I shall have to figure out how I'm going to make my way through this world. Gives us a good start having three friends who you owe your life to. That would be a beginning, I think, of something quite delightful. But I shall have to figure out exactly what I can do with my um, diminished presence. At least it's not terrible here. Not I feel like we should at least introduce you to the three bells. If we give them warning of your appearance and let them know that we can vouch for you, that you're not going to tear the place apart, I'm sure they wouldn't mind having you around. These are the three bells whose names are owed to this establishment, yes? Yes. Whom you said before you had been hired because of a rat problem. That those were normal rats. Well, I do Getting thank into you. their flower. I do thank you for not including me in this in the term normal rat. I would hardly hate to be I would hate to be considered normal in any respect. But mm. To be fair, I don't think I've ever seen a quote unquote quote normal rat with the manners that could pass at court. Well, I have always wanted to consider myself unique, and now I shall. And there's a knock at the door, firm. Uh, who wants to get that? I'll, I'll go open it. Um, Horace, Horace, get behind me. Yeah, he kind of skitters yeah. under the bed, actually. Like... Yes? Um, you see Dudek standing there. Sorry oh, I'm late, I wanted to look up a few things. All good. We might have something as well. Come in. Uh, we yes. we met somebody. He looks around the room, sees the three of you. Ah, uh, I take it they're not here. Horace. He's, is, Horace, he's fine. Are you sure? He's a friend. Calling from underneath the bed. Are you sure? Yes. Yes. Oh. And he kind of crawls out and dusts himself off. Hello. Oh. Uh, he came oh. through one of the portals. You did. And he, Dudek kind of seems to forget everything else and just kind of uh, kneels down and extends his hand. Well, I'd really like to hear about these portals, if you might. Oh, well. Same. I hate to disappoint my newest friend. My name is um, Horace. Yes? He kind of looks to the others of the three of you to kind of confirm the name. You get the feeling that, as he kind of indicated before, it's the name he wants to be used, wants to have, but nobody ever calls him that. Yes. It's what we're going to call him. If he says he wants to be called that, that's what we're going to call him. And kind of seeing the little confirmation from at least a couple of you. Horace. Well, I... Indeed. And uh, Duda kind of steps back, um, finds and a I'll seat. And I'll recount. Okay. Go ahead. I was going to, like, as Dudek uh, finds a seat, we'll just, like, I'm assuming he'll recount the entire battle, what happened, and how Melora and, uh, and uh, Graveler were lost. And Dudek has a couple of big, big books that he's brought with him. Um, Silas, you remember that he was very protective of his books, but he actually brought them out of his out of his safekeeping um, and kind of brought them with him. They look like older to tomes. One of them definitely dwarven made, uh, as you can kind of see the the, the metal and... Uh, gem outlay on the outside of the book. Um, but he has another little book which he folds open and starts taking notes as everything is, is going on. Indeed, indeed, indeed. It makes a few, uh, makes a few comments, but nothing really all that substantive. He's kind of listening to what's going on. 
makes a few questions here and there, um, and then kind of holds up uh, his book. Um, actually, he wouldn't have a picture of that. Um, no, he, he would have, actually. So he picks up, he holds up his book, and it's got raw writing scrawled across it. Do any of you know Infernal? I don't think I do. I do not. Okay. Then it looks like uh, rough scribbles. How about you, uh, Silas? And you know a bunch of languages, so. Uh, Silas doesn't have it, but he will use the staff to uh, cast. Uh... Actually, no, he has the spell. He'll cast um, uh, the languages, one that comprehend languages. Okay. Um, so do that kind of turns to a particular page. He hope, holds up in the book and he's asking, um, Horace, does this seem to be the kind of language the, the, the letters, at least do they seem familiar and Horace kind of trundles over to look from your perspective, Silas, the words start to swim into coherence. Um, and it seems to be a, a, um, there's a couple of notes actually you would all kind of note the dwarven name at the bottom. Um, but it seems to be a transcription of what was uh, written on um, stone. And it seems to be a, a, a pledge, if you will, of connection. And it feels as though, it, with it being infernal, it feels as though it's an appeal to an infernal power to create connection. Um. Horace kind of trundles a little bit closer. Yes, yes, I think these are the letters, although none of them are in the right order. Well, this is probably not the words you actually read there. Oh, that would make a lot more sense. Now, I can't read it, but um, yes, I think these are the words, uh, the letters, I should say. Interesting, interesting. And it kind of turns the book around, uh, pulls out a, a, uh, a strip of, of uh, leather and kind of marks it in the book. Um puts it aside. Well, then I think the the spell rot that you were looking at uh, was indeed some sort of infernal connective a very... Uh, what does that mean? Well, they, they were generating this portal on whatever side this was. This, um, how did you call it? The awful place. Right, right. Um, well, it, it narrows it down to being at least some sort of infernal plane, which is beneficial. It narrows it down to only a few thousand. Uh, but um, your descriptions narrow it a little bit further, sort of. There are a few realms described, such as you have, have uh, mentioned. I will want to do some research to confirm, but it seems as though it's one of the smaller, um, shall we say, punitive dimensions, uh, a space where... Uh, a fair amount of fundamental uh, biological, fundamental spiritual energy is recycled. And that stone, as you described it, was not stone at all, but a sort of physical manifestation of this transformation. Um, I hate to, I hesitate to say, but it looks as though that, that portal was driven open by the consumption, or the very least the, um, the, uh, compression or the um, stressing of souls. Dreadful from our perspective, but from theirs, probably the very natural form. There is a place to uh, make sure I get that right. I'm looking at the wrong page. Pardon me, I have to find it in my notes. I wrote it too many times. Oh, that's not the reference I was looking for. Apologies, I have lost in my own lore document. 
<laughs> As one does. <laughs> As one does. Did I mention I have a lot of lore? Um, there is a, a place which is hinted at. A place which has mm. connections to um, reincarnation as well as suffering. Uh, it is a place not entirely unlike our own, but utterly transformed. There's even some suggestion that the things beyond the great deserts are similar in nature, but I don't think this is on our same plane. Uh, it is a place referred to sometimes as Omisha's Shadow. Knew it. Me, the player. Ah, the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> now, while we could not, in any good consciousness, try to replicate the effect, or rather the, the, the means by which they have generated such a portal, this would give us some ability potentially to construct one of our own, or at least know a target for one. But that realm is very far. While called a shadow, it, it's known to be on the edges of the cosmological, a far realm, sometimes referred to. It is one of the places where, and he kind of looks a little nervously at, at, uh, at Horace, and you can feel him deliberately moving away from saying, uh, uh, the name of his of the group um, of Argenti Sagex, uh, but instead kind of says, of an interested group um, of explorers. So it it is known, but it is not intended to be a place where anyone returns to, or returns from, I should say. Well, I hate to be the living contradiction of all things, but um, ta-da! Yes, well, that bodes well for your friends, but I will need some time to figure out exactly how I might be able to assist you in this. Do you know uh, how to make a portal? No. Mm. That knowledge has Not been yet. lost, at least. Um, I have been doing research on this for a long time, following the notes of the Argenti Sagex. If I could get a hold of a more complete book, then I might be able to do something about it, but the ones I have are merely fragments. Um, you still have the book that you had before, right? Mm -hmm. You did show it to him, but you, Silas, did, you kept it. Well, Silas looks over at Annie and says, The book? I'll, like, go get it. It's like just in a box underneath the bed. It's nothing special about this place. It's been stored this entire time. <laughs> Hide it in plain sight. It's actually behind, it's behind the painting. The painting is mysteriously like six inches from the wall. <laughs> <laughs> No, there there would be a a uh, a drawer in my in my thing that actually has my uh, unpickable lock on it. Nice, nice. Um, so you pull out the book. Yep. Ah, this would help. I would need time to examine it. However. Yep, I trust you with it. Well, I hope your trust is not ill-founded. But I will... Um, um, you know, I I had been intending to travel on with um, the crew of the caravan, the, the, the circus. Mm -hmm. It does make a useful um, ability to travel beyond, between islands. But... Perhaps I'm going to call Elfwater home for a little longer. Um, I, I'll be searching for a safe place to uh, place my door. If you have suggestions, I would appreciate that. Hmm. Was there any like the early like, three buildings next to the next to the Temple of Ignis? Um, I think the Temple of Venus kind of stood a little bit on its own. Okay. Um, I mean, it would... There are buildings it, all over the city, though. They're yeah. free. I mean, maybe like the like office space in the temple or something like that. 
So I also tell him if he look if he's looking for a place that's secure, he can stay at the village. That's a generous offer, but I think that I want to be a little closer to town. There are connections I can make here, and also the caravans will come a little more closely. Uh, one more thing. There was a guy with white robes that helped close the portal from our end during the battle. Can you be more specific? Not quite. Uh, he made me swear to not mention anything to anybody except for these two, and I'll point to Silas and Annie. Silas puts up an image of him. But um, I'm hoping that if I honor these wishes, that we can have his help again in the future, because he seems like a powerful person who knows a lot of things. He mentioned, did we, uh, question to the players, did we mention Catheron to uh, Dudek before? I don't think so. Okay. So I'll leave that part out. But uh, I believe he was also our Ar Argenti Sidex. He was. He, I, 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 I dropped your name and he said he knew about your endeavors. And I said, hey, you should go talk to him. And then he jumped off the building and he, I couldn't find him anymore. So he's probably around watching us somewhere. I, I don't know the visuals of him, but you have a name. I forget what he said. He gave you the name Tassar. Yeah. I mean, it's like, do I want to, like, break that oath? Or... That's, that's that's entirely up to you. Um, just, But for the player's knowledge, he did give the name Tassar. Yeah. Yeah, did Medrick tell us the name, though? Not yet, no. Okay. And that's not an oath that... that... He, he was pretty arrogant. He just... I am known by many names, and... Never gave me anything. Well, I, I don't Deception check. <laughs> Fair. You're, you're that, that is valid. That is <laughs> valid. You are lying. Insight so. check. So Inception versus... It's probably Inception. not his real name, though. Inception. Inception it doesn't matter. Inception. He gave you a name. Hold on. There's a cat <laughs> on my desk. Catception. <laughs> Catception. Yeah. Deception. Oh, that's, that's a plus oh, one. Okay. Catception cat would be like cat inside cat inside cat. That doesn't seem right. Fifteen. Okay. And I also get a 15. <laughs> All right. Um, I know you're lying. <laughs> so I think that um, Silas, you're, you're aware that they had a longer conversation. You're not sure what was said in that conversation, but uh, I think Medrick is leaving things out. Um, with you, Annie, it's sort of like I'm pretty sure he must have told him his name. Or a name. A name. <laughs> so take as that someone as who will. goes by different names. Yeah. I, I understand that people don't always give the right name. Yeah. But a name is better than no name. Well, if you see him again, I suppose if he's already followed my work and hasn't reached out to me, well, that's disturbing. And you say he was definitely a Genji Sagax, which is uh, difficult to say, given that there aren't any. He had the myself. ring in the book. Mm -hmm. Did he? Well, I shall have to seek out this person myself. If I can try to contact him again. Via ascending. Once I know where you've set up shop in town, I can encourage him to visit you. I would appreciate that. I'm, I'm sure if you combine your knowledge, this entire party would be more successful. Well, if he has another one of the books and it's in more complete shape than this one, that would definitely help. Until then, do I, I, do I remember if he did? His book looked pristine. He he did, yeah. And he would be someone I would definitely wish to speak to. It disturbs me that he's both aware of my work and unwilling or uninterested in speaking to me, though. And if you see him as Argentis Segex, as I said, there aren't any, so... But to be fair, but, he was unwilling to speak to pretty much anybody. Well, I have much to research. 
Um, I'm assuming that other discussions happened in which you've actually told Dudek that not only do you, the reason why you want to get the portal open is that two people have gone through it that you want yeah. to get back. Um, I will see what I can do. As I said, I don't have the means directly to do any sort of openings like this. I know there are spells of such power, but generally they rely upon connections between uh, the places you're intending to go. Yeah, I was hoping uh, the white-robed guy would be able to reopen it just for a few seconds for us to rescue uh, Melora and Graveler, but his response was essentially... Mm. It's easier to stop something than it is to do something. That is often true. Well, it's easier to burn down a house than to put it out, though. I'll just look sideways like... <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying. We know someone who... Who possibly could do something like that. Yep. Which is not to be trusted. Who's that? Uh, dang it. Something. Oh, the entity from the party? Uh, yes. He would, he would use her name. I don't know. It wasn't Corpse Wallow. I remember that was not the name. Uh, start with a C, though. Uh, so do you mean you mean the the hag yeah that is corpse wallow that is that is her name isn't it trip wallow uh or yeah that's crypt wallow that's it you know i've written it both ways in my notes so <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the universe keeps shifting it's an uncertain entity and that's been worse <laughs> uh, remind me of what dudek remembered of the party because most people did not remember anything no he didn't remember shit yeah that's why that's why i thought i want to make sure that i was consistent from your perspective mm -hmm. and if you know someone who can work such magics i would love to meet them i don't think you would um, she extracts a cost for anything she does And if I not... catch, hmm? I was going to say, of the guy in the white robes, I'll try to get a few more, a, a bit more information out of him. At least he only extracts your patients. Well, we don't know if he can actually do it. And you're going to have to find some way to keep him around. Otherwise, he'll just disappear again. I wonder if I could contact him and have him come to this room right now. You've met him. I suppose. You've talked with him. He gave you a name, even if it's not real. That's probably enough for your spell. All right, let's see what happens. Fuck. Oh, this is not the correct sheet. Okay, this is the correct sheet. I knew that. Kind of sending is a level three, right? I kind of feel like there should be yep. sending sheets, which is there's 25 spaces on the page, so you know exactly. You don't have to count anything. You just fill in the spaces. <laughs> okay. Oh, do I have to like say the words out loud, or can I just say them in my mind? Uh, I think the sending have a vocal component. Is the question, and I think it does. I don't think you have to say them, shout them out loud, but you do have to say them, I believe. Okay. But we'll just... I'll double, just say... Double check here real quick. Uh, it doesn't say it, but there is a vocal component, so... Okay. You can kind of, you know, if you want to really muffle your voice, you can cover it over. It'll come right, out muffled in their head, mind you, but... Close my eyes and concentrate and say... It's Medrek. We met on the roof. Can you come to the Three Bells room 
and whatever the room, the room number is. Dudek is here. It 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 sounded <laughs> up until the point you said Dudek. It was kind of a "Hey, you up?" Um, kind of call. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, what have I got to lose? <laughs> I think the answer and he's gonna is... Be like, and he's right. going to be like, new phone, who this? <laughs> new brain, who this? Uh, no, there is an answer. Um, the answer is simply, I'm busy. Sounds about right. No, oh, he says he's busy. Honestly, I'm not sure what I expected. <laughs> well, do you know what he's doing or why he's doing it? I have no idea. Honestly, I'm surprised I, I even got a response. <laughs> well, that might mean something. And it wasn't a flat out no, it was I'm doing something else, so who knows, he may come around. Well, if you can set up a meeting, I would appreciate it. In the meantime, I've got a lot of work to mull over here. How long are we willing to wait until we make an attempt of some sort? He looks over at uh, at Horace. What kind of world is this for for a random person to be deposited in? Well, are they in danger? Is it merely an inconvenience? Well, I'd say more than an inconvenience. Um, the, that world isn't actively trying to kill you most of the time, so that part's good. Most people just seem sort of disinterested, and um, depending on how interesting your friend is, I suppose that might be a problem. Uh, when they went through the portal, were they anywhere near any of those other things? Well, they were getting dragged through by the hairy beast, so yes. That might be a bit more dangerous, then. If they were of interest, I suppose. I'm afraid I couldn't speak to your friend um, as to how much trouble she might be in, but it probably is prudent to be faster rather than slower. Is she capable of taking care of herself? From, from what we've seen, yes. And she has the uh, Earth Elemental with her. Well, that one you described, the, the child, yes. I think they'll probably be all right for a little while. How long has it been? A few hours right now. Well, if they're still alive, I'm sure they'll be alive in the morning. Um, well, not their morning, because there is no morning there, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. That is reassuring. Thank you. I'm sorry. I don't mean to give you vague news, but I'm afraid I... My entrance into that place was, um... Well, safe, I suppose. I just sort of woke up there one day. So is this... A place where dead people go, usually? Well, I think a lot of people were complaining about it. So I'm assuming that they were uh, they were dead. Or just maybe given up, I suppose. I don't think I'm dead. I haven't felt more alive in a long time, mind you. Good company. Bit of beer. I think I could be quite happy being here. So maybe, maybe somebody killed you in your sleep? What a grisly thought. Something. Entirely possible, though. Or, who knows, maybe you just got really drunk one night at a court party. What exactly are you? That, sir, is a long and enchanting tale that I don't really know. But let's just simply say that I am... that I am, I suppose. Is Horace giving off any magic? Um, his sword is definitely magical. His, uh, his, uh, doublet is magical. Uh, he himself. I don't think he radiates magic. What about his hat? Uh, the hat is not magical. Now, on, on that train of thought. If you think about it, do you know who was in power? Because you said it, the Montrose family 
is the is the current royal family. But do you have any vague idea of who was in power? Last you can think about it. Uh, and and, and I'll I'll go over like I'll mention the different names in order, mm. like from like current to. Oh, a specific year, like the the year of the Montrose dynasty, six fifty nine or something. Well, well, I'll I'll go through like which monarchs were in mm. power from like my mother to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh oh, oops, what's up, kitty? Uh, where's my saving throws? Difficulty is seventeen. Oh, that hovered on a nine. There, on a nineteen. So no. How much was it? Is that the ten I an see in front of you? Ten, yeah. Okay. It, <laughs> like the 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 three D die like hovered on the nineteen. You remember being drilled on this when you were younger. They were boring drills, but you went through them every day until you got them right. You knew all the rulers back to when the the Montrose family first rose to power. And as you start to re 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 um, recite them, going back to your mother and then her uncle and then back a few more stages, you can't recall them. And you kind of feel that onrushing pressure that the confusion has brought in so many people. That beyond a certain point, you can't remember not just your own history, but you can't even remember the history of the land. And you find yourself kind of internally echoing kind of what Horace has said. That he can't force things to come to mind. But he can recognize them when they're given to him. And you feel that memory being there, but you can't access it. You can even remember days where you had to do that drill. Remember one day where it was, it was sunny outside, all you wanted to do was go outside, you had to do the drill. And when the instructor saw that you wanted to go outside, they made you do the drill again. And then they found another drill for you to do. You remember that part in vivid detail. But the I remember the doing the rote memory, but I don't remember the rote memory. Exactly. None of those names so far sound familiar. Aside from the Montrose name, of, of course, itself. I really wish I could be of more help. Give it time. You, you literally just walked out of hell. Something like that. I'd like to say walked. I'd like to say strolled, but fell was probably more accurate. You know, most of the time people want to be falling from heaven. I suppose this will do in my case. Unless you've got other things that I can help you with, I think I've got enough to research. The bodies themselves right. are still there, or I saw nothing outside, so I assume they've been taken away. They've been uh, they taken should be away, at but Dr. They Marigold's didn't. workshop. Yeah, some places they're still there, but Marigold has the rest. I took a couple of blood samples from them in case that pr helps us find a way back to them. The latest one was outside the uh, the bakery, whatever the name was. Aria's dough. Yes. And Mark, how far do I get in that in that drill? Like, do I get like the past three, the past five? About the past three. Three. So three beyond your 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 parents. So my parents plus three, or yeah. yeah. Okay. So great. Great, great grandparents. Is that right? No, great, great grandparents. But uh, as soon as I have set down roots for my door, I will contact you to let you know. But I should be closer. On board we that appreciate ship, it. Brother. That's good. I'll let you know if I find out more information about White Robe Guy. Well, let us will walk out with Dudek. Right. Um, he bid you good day and leaves. Something on your mind, Silas? 
Um, he said, well, one, uh, he opens up his book, tears another page out, makes another uh, notepad. and says, I have found a way that the rest of you with names in this book can communicate with each other without it having to be initiated by me. Uh, and he'll hand the notepad over. Um, That's quite generous. It makes Welcome to the group easier. chat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Basically. Um, you can contact the whole group or one person as you wish. Uh, it'll all go through me. I'd like to help with the portal research. As you may remember, it's something that I'm currently investigating for other reasons, but now that we have multiple people to try to find, yes, if I course. can help. If you don't mind, I wouldn't mind. Well, no. I will get a sample of the things directly. You can keep yours. I think that will be important. Mm. At the very least, during the casting, it may help. Um, other than that, um, yeah, we've got a lot of people that we need to find who are currently trapped in other dimensions. Yes, well, I, as far as I, I know, that was one of the reasons that the Argenti Sagex existed. Not only were they explorers, but they could undertake rescues, they could undertake uh, protections. And they no longer exist, or well, perhaps one still does. But it makes me mm. wonder why they stopped. Maybe they, they were stopped. Exactly. Get the book for a moment. I've never had a chance to actually look at it when I could understand it now the the book itself is locked it was locked by the compass right mm, no i think it's locked by the ring the ring was the access to the other stuff okay i want to make sure i get the order right um and i don't think the book was actually locked it was like, me that locked it in in the in the cover it wasn't that it was Okay, it's been a while since I've thought about that book. And it was, yeah, I'm trying to remember I think, what the detail was. Yeah, well, Annie was looking at it while we were in the cave with the hyenas. Yeah. But I don't think it was locked at that point. Um, I, I, do you want to look here, or should we go somewhere? Standing I wouldn't mind just flipping through it to see what there is to it that we couldn't see normally. I don't intend on stopping now, but... Uh, I think you have to go back to your place, and we all have other things to do. Well, I, I suppose a few minutes looking at it, but I, I really would rather get going soon. Um, and he pulls out the book, presents it. Yep, so I will open it up and see if it appears to be something other than just tattered pages. What happened to the ring? He's wearing it. Okay. He always wears it. Um, as you, as the book and the ring get closer, you can feel that familiar uh, vibrational sensation, mm -hmm. sort of notion of them being connected in some way. And you look at the front cover of the book and you realize there is a space in the center of the front cover of the book, which is a mirror of the face of the ring. No, well, he'll put the ring in the socket. Like, or... essentially, yeah. And it turns a little bit under your hand. Um, and this surprises Dudek, who did not realize, first of all, that the two were connected, did not have a ring. A blue glow starts to form around the edges of the book, which it did not have before. Is that like what the other guy's book had? Yes. Okay. And a thin pillar of blue light extends from the bottom of the book, and it hovers in midair. You can see now that while the book seemed to be incomplete, extra pages have been added to the book. 
So, uh, so it seems like it is incomplete, but there's some extra pages. It seemed like it had been incomplete, but now okay. it seems to be completed. Huh. Remarkable. What, what, what have you done? Uh, nothing. The book was found with the ring and that compass that I loaned you. Uh, the ring is the access for the other two. The ring, I the thought compass is still locked in the orrery, unfortunately. Yeah, the, I thought that it, there might be something magical about the book, but I wasn't, I didn't know if it would be complete. Uh, so I also flip through a few pages just to see what kind of thing is in here, but. Um, um, and as you flip through it, it flips easily and it maintains its position there. What you notice is the pages that were added are not solid pages. They are formed from pure magical energy, um, such that if this book was not active, those would not appear. Hmm. Did Cassar's book look similar or did it look like it had real pages? It was a mixture of both. Okay. Um, huh. And as you take a closer look at the book and realize that it is a catalog of the journal, the journey of that particular Agenti Segex member, uh, observations about extraplanar travel, observations about uh, the building of portals, in fact, as well. Not necessarily complete, at least not from mm. what you're able to scan, but a lot more along what you were looking for. This is remarkable. I had no idea this book was that extensive. Me neither. I, we saw some pages in it that it seemed as though the previous owner had gone mad and perhaps been killed by the the hyena god Laughing one. we encountered, yeah. Um, um, Dudek looks nervous. I think that we're going to need to take this to a much more secure location. Yeah. Uh, this is much more valuable than I had thought it was. I can take this back to my library where I know it will be relatively secure. But I, I do not have a, a ring such as yours. May I borrow it? No. My apologies, but this ring is far too useful for me to hand off right now. I understand. Um, is, hmm. I can study the book as it is, and perhaps I can find another way to activate it, but I anticipate uh, hopefully seeing you come by to visit. Certainly. I mean, perhaps we can take it to where you want to store it, and I can unlock it there and leave it, maybe? It, it may, may not be, it may know. not be movable, but at least you might be able to study it. Perhaps this is rather exciting. I, mm. I had not thought this book was quite what it might be. I thought of a discarded remnant, not something more, more complete. Yeah. Um, Silas is going to close it up and just hold it. So we need to get this to your, your vault. Your and safety. Once you close it, the light fades and it becomes just a book again. Um, Checking it with detect magic. What is it giving off while it's, well, open compared to closed? Uh, open, it is almost straight up illusion. Mm, makes sense. Um, there is a sense of conjuration as well, weirdly enough. Um, but once you close it, it seems non-magical. Oh, good. Yes, let's get this to safety now. Indeed. Are you coming, or shall I wait you later? Uh, no, it, Silas is coming with him. He's making sure that book doesn't get disappeared somewhere. Okay. We'll have more detail about that one. Meanwhile, uh, the, the, those two have vanished, but you still have entertainment, entertaining company in Horus for the evening. And I think that's where we'll bring the session to a close. Annie is in a bit of a existential crisis of she she just keeps going <laughs> <laughs> i kind of almost imagine that it's it's like a she's probably built up little mnemonic rhymes and things and they just seem to fall apart which as someone who forgets things on occasion i know how frustrating that can be and i want yes. you to feel all of that frustration 
<laughs> it's all good. I have memory issues. It's fine. I understand. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I think we'll bring it to a close there. So it gets me a chance to prepare for what comes next. Uh, I hadn't thought about going back to the book. That's that's a, that's a callback that I, I wish I had remembered to look up again. So that's great. Um, we will resume <laughs> again in two weeks, uh, at which point we'll decide, I suppose, what happens. Uh, ready. I want to uh, thank everybody for playing. Thanks for running. Thanks for those of you who are watching either at home or on youtube.com slash ENCAF1 or twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. I probably said that too quickly. Have a delightful day. Uh, and uh, yeah, do we do, still never figured out how to end these things. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Happy it's Thanksgiving to all, to all in Canada. It's true. Yes. Yes, mm, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Hit the button, Frank. Very well. <laughs> See ya.